live and we're live we're live ah! that's me screaming because people can hear us now <laughs> human leather armchairs let's go all right there we go hello yeah. everyone Whoop. oh where did it go there it went there it went there we go okay all right are we audible yes we are audible Okay, cool. Oh, look at us down in the corner and shit. Oh my god. Awesome. Hey, he everyone. squished us as much as I could. We're as squished as we can be. Okay, it says stream pause. It shouldn't say that. Uh, my application. Oh, right. Well, there's a like delay, delay. delay. So, there was, uh, so yeah. Yeah. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, In case you are new here, which I sincerely doubt, Kel and myself both enjoy a little video game called RimWorld. Amanda has not played it, and now we are going to basically evangelize our interest in a game that is getting a, a new DLC really soon. Okay? Nice. Uh, this is a special... I'm also here. eating chorizo and eggs. Yeah, this is a special uh, live stream we're doing. This is a special geek show. If y'all dig it, we'd be happy to do things similar to it in the future. But for now, this is consider this a one-off. What you are looking at right now is my screen. The sounds for RimWorld are turned off because that's just how it's going to be. Could, we could not figure out how to how to get Spike to give me her shit without also getting our voices. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here and I'm going to basically try to convert Amanda to RimWorldism. Kel does not need conversion. Kel is the same brain. I'm already actor. here. I'm yeah. I'm already in this filth. I'm in the soup. Uh... <laughs> in the soup. Wearing your fucking human leather fedora. You are in the soup. Okay. So, so here's the thing. Every time you talk about your human leather fedoras and armchairs, <laughs> it makes me not want to play it. Okay. Okay. We will let let's also Spike, Spike. Yeah. I don't have any human leather because I turn all of my enemies into dogs. That's true. And then, and, uh, and then they're crazy. not human leather anymore. They're they're dogs. Uh, so it's dog leather. Um, <laughs> okay, everyone. Apparently, right my now? face is covered up by the uh, the YouTube Iron Circus logo, and frankly, I like it. It's very Mike Wach Wachowski. Ooh. Like, Ladies, look, I'm on TV. And nine binary pals. We are now looking at RimWorld. RimWorld is a story generator by Tynan Sylvester. It, 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 it's a game. It calls itself a story generator. Why it does that will make sense later on. The best way to describe it is, do you remember the TV show Firefly? Do you remember the aesthetics of that TV show? No. That's, <laughs> it's like Wild West in outer space. It's where there's Western. Oh, is that where the gif of the guy playing with dinosaurs toys comes from? Yes, yes, that's where that comes from. Yeah. So you'll notice that the, the logo contains like a sheriff's badge. That's the kind of vibe it's working with. Now with mods, you can make it completely fucking unrecognizable. And I strongly recommend you do so because the mob scene for RimWorld is completely bonkers. Whatever you he, want um, to do. The, the guy who made it made a speech about how like, so when I first found out about RimWorld, I was partly turned off about it by the fact that it has very simplistic graphics. No. Um, yeah. I was kind of like, how can I empathize with these little balls um, that they look like- Well, we're gonna get to that. Well, yeah. well, so, so, but he then like, I watched a video with him where he talks about the graphics are intentionally simplistic to make it easier for people to mod. So yeah. you don't need to have a strong like sense of design or artistic, uh, skill to mod RimWorld and that has really opened up the RimWorld mod scene to like the everyone. Everyone yeah. who is interested in modding can fiddle with it. And everyone does. What you're looking at right now is not Here, the... I've swapped oh, things around so hopefully I'm not hidden behind Okay. <laughs> the little logo. What you're, what you're looking at now is not the original RimWorld opening screen. It is what you get when you download one of the mo one of excuse me, one of the DLCs called Ideology. And before that was this one, which oops, you can't really see him because he is behind a screen. He's naked. But his name His he, dick this, is out in everything. This is the royalty <laughs> DLC, which added the Shattered Empire faction, which is complex and I'll go into. And I was shouting is, about dicks through a mouthful of so chorizo what we're and gonna egg. Do, what we're going to do right now, it's 
going i'm just going to play sort of like a normal completely unmodded games all my mods have been uninitiated so we're gonna just play the vanilla rim world except you have all the currently available expansions game so we're going to go to new colony and the first thing you're going to be presented with amanda is the four i'm most not presented with nothing you're presented with this <laughs> the four most common starts you can actually download other starting scenarios from the steam workshop and i highly recommend it and you have the basic vanilla start, which is three people cr wake up in their crypto sleep sarcophagi, which is basically stasis, and they are crash landed on a planet. That's kind of the most basic ass RimWorld story. You are marooned on a habitable but alien planet. The goal of the game is to get back into space, get back into crypto sleep and get wherever you are going. And it tells you what you start with. You start with three people, who have who are chosen from a group of eight people so there are five people who are going to be related to the three people that you show up with on the planet start with three people chosen from eight that's what that means and then a whole bunch of junk like steel wood a random pet which can get very weird a bunch of money a bunch of food and the the chunks of your ship that crashed across the map so that's the basic one Lost Tribe is if you're all like, fuck that space shit. I want to start as literal Stone Age people. And that's what Lost Tribe is. Interesting little tidbit. When you spawn in the Lost Tribe, you spawn with a jade knife. That's the only way to get a jade knife in RimWorld. It's for some reason the Lost Tribe gets a jade knife. You can't craft it. You can't find it anywhere. It's This is the only way to get a jade knife. If you spawn as Lost Tribe, that doesn't mean anything. Jade knives aren't particularly valuable, but I, I think that's interesting. If you want an easy peasy start, you can start out as the Rich Explorer. You just show up with a shitload of money, some advanced weaponry, and some advanced medicine. Rich Explorer is not an easy peasy start. Um, it's easier. It's, you start with a bunch of uh, cool shit, basically. In but in the defaults, like when they're recommending, they say like the crash landed is the easiest one. Yeah, um, it's the most basic vanilla intro one. It's the one we're gonna choose. The one that I play more often than not these days is called Naked Brutality, which is kind of like. Have you ever um, seen the reality show Naked and Afraid? Yes, I love uh, Naked and Afraid, but Naked that's, Brutality. That's Naked Brutality. Uh... <laughs> it's like Naked Brutality meets Subnautica. You are just smashed down onto the planet alone with nothing, and you're trying to figure out what's going on. Can I take a sidebar to say how stupid Naked and Afraid is? <laughs> yeah, but it's naked people, so people no, watch no, no. it. No, but like the people are always like, Well, I'm a survivor, I can survive. That's just like our ancestors did. I'm like, our ancestors did not survive alone in the woods. Yeah. They had family groups and communities, like even like the apes were rel related to didn't survive alone in the woods. It's like, what are you talking yeah. about? Just like our ancestors, I'm a lone wolf. Wolves aren't even lone don't even travel alone. That's why the lone wolf is an outlier. Ah! Anyway, let's go. I am going to select Crash Landed because, again, we're going to go for the most basic RimWorld experience and we're going to click Next. Now, here is sort of like the meat of RimWorld. This is why Tynan calls it a storytelling, a story generator. The thing that's sort of RimWorld's killer app is you have an AI storyteller. Again, you can download a whole shitload of modded AI storytellers from absurd to really cool. But the game as shipped comes with three. One of them is called Cassandra Classic. Cassandra creates story events on a classic increasing curve Cassandra. of challenge and tension. She'll push you with dangerous events, then give you breathing room, then come back to push more. So Cassandra Classic is, again, basic ass rim world. This next one, I think, is more Amanda's speed. This is Phoebe Chillax. Phoebe gives you lots of time between disasters to build your colony, but beware as at high difficulties, she'll hit as hard as anyone. So Phoebe is just like, I don't want to worry about mechanoid invaders and cavemen trying to eat my liver i just want phoebe i just want to be cool i just want to build well, a little and if you want that what i'd suggest is you select phoebe chillax and you select either peaceful or community builder for the difficulty level that's that's also, just so phoebe phoebe chillax like people misinterpret the long times in between disasters her disasters are harder that's why she gives you more time in between them yeah. Um, and, and the third one is the one that kind of, if you are a regular watcher of RimWorld content on YouTube or Twitch, chances are this is the guy you see the most often. 
this is Randy Random. And you'll see people talking shit about Randy while they play RimWorld. And that's why Randy Random is the guy who doesn't follow any of the rules of decent storytelling. He will generate incredibly hard or incredibly nonsensical things or incredibly out of place events because it's all random. And this is what you choose if you want something that's not remotely predictive, doesn't remotely make sense. You just crash land on the world and then suddenly there's toxic volcanic fallout everywhere. That's what you, you know, that's what you choose if you want that. But like I said, we're going for the most basic RimWorld experience. So we're going to choose Cassandra. And here are the many difficulty levels of RimWorld. And they kind of do what they say on the tin. Peaceful is, it's got recommended at the bottom, you'll see. There are no major directs. You can get diseases. You can get mental breaks. Hell mental breaks yeah. Are, I love major And occasionally you'll get an, a mad animal attack. But these are nothing you can't handle. And it's, you know, it's rich. Players who want to learn the game and mechanics with no pressure, players who just want to build, and players who just want to relax. You choose peaceful. Then there's community builder, where, you know, you build a nice little town and you focus on building the town. It's not really about fighting. And, you know, if you're new That's to That's the team, one I usually play on, yeah. uh, community builder. If you're like, I want to build the perfect colony, that's what community builder is. Adventure story is... You know, the, the planet's dangerous. You can still build your nice little town, but the planet's dangerous. People will probably die. And this is for people who play strategy games as a regular thing, but have never played RimWorld or experienced RimWorld players who just want to do something funny or weird or low, low pressure. Strive to survive is kind of rough. A whole bunch of people will probably die. This is for experienced players. Blood and dust is if you, you just kind of want your ass kicked, but not too hard. Even if you do everything right, you'll still get your ass kicked at a bunch of cases. That's what blood and dust is. Mm -hmm. And losing is fun is if you just straight up don't want to win. If you want to play a game where your colony is inevitably overrun by murder machines, cavemen, outlaws, whatever you want. That's, that's what losing is fun is for. And I believe that is a term that originated with the guy who is currently making Dwarf Fortress. He has a philosophy where he says losing is fun. And then there's custom. That's how you put it together where it's like, I, I want it to be more detailed. And this is what happens when you click custom. All of these, this is a lot of sliders. This is a lot of shit. But My eyes, start, it glazed over. Yeah, once you start playing RimWorld on the regular, all of this will make more sense. And it's things like, I want every time I farm, I want 500% yield on all my farming. Every time I go on a raid, I want the loot to be 500% normal. I want friendly fire to not be a thing. I want my colonists to spawn with a natural mood boost. If this was another kind of game, uh, multiple other kinds of games, these would probably be called mutators. That's what these are. And, you know, you can turn things off. Like, if you don't want to deal with threats or predators hunting humans, so, like, a wolf or a fox or a bear won't suddenly try to eat one of your colonists. You can turn that off. If you don't want extreme weather events like volcanic winters or toxic fallout, you can turn that off. So you can make the game very, very easy on yourself, very, very hard on yourself. Yeah. Again, we're going for the um, most... Yeah? Spike, yeah. what do you... So you said that you usually start as a lone explorer. Like, what other settings do you do? Um, I just do naked brutality, adventure story, or strive to survive, usually. Okay. Uh, and you don't edit the scenario at all? Um, oh, I do that all the time. I have tons of mods to do that, but this is mod free right now. Well, so, you can still edit the scenario, even the default game. Yeah, it would um, be. Yeah, I know where you can like add more stuff that you drop with and different weapons. Yeah. Like um, so what I usually do is I turn off infestations because I hate them. And... Bit bad and we will get to those. They suck. Uh, so I always turn off inf infestations and then I make it so the pet is not random. The pet is always a wolf. Of course. Um, okay. So for the sake of Amanda here, cause I want to show you a bunch of stuff. I am going to go ahead and click adventure story on Cassandra classic. And Cassandra. I'm going to select reload anytime commitment mode is you can you can't save the game you can't save scum you can only save by quitting the game and i use so many mods commitment mode is generally never a good idea for me because mm -hmm. stuff stuff gets weird sometimes when you use a whole bunch of mods mm -hmm. but i'm gonna click reload anytime all right so that is sort of 
how the game's going to go. It's going to be an adventure story being told by Cassandra Classic that we can save scum if we want. Next. Now, this is how you create the world. Oh, the seed word is intestines. Let's make the seed world. Amanda. 100 rats. 100 rats. <laughs> That's the seed world, Amanda. No, and make it 100 rats. 100 rats. Okay, all Thank right. You. One. I appreciate that. That's not how you spell that. 100 rats. Okay. Globe coverage is how much of the globe is going to have land on it. You know, just for the heck of it, 30 is good. Let's let's go with 30. Overall rainfall normal, overall temperature normal. I need to normal. modify your little head so that blood is coming out of, like, little droplets of blood are coming out when you're talking to make it more obvious. And then this is who is going to spawn on the planet, okay? Civil Outlander Union, that's basically you. Rough Outlander Union, that's you but kind of shitty. Pirate gang, you can never be friends with the pirate gang. They just want to kill you. Gentle tribe are Stone Age people who are friendly. Fierce tribe are Stone Age people who kind of don't like you. Savage tribe are Stone Age people who will never be your friend no matter what. Aww. They do cannibal and nudist tribes I can include, but they are not part of the default. As well as cannibal pirate gang. When they say cannibal, they mean it. They mean these people will eat you. And they will spawn with cannibal traits. Nice. Shattered Empire is the, an ultra-tech refugee society from the planet Sophia Munda. They are, if you're familiar with Ian M. Banks' books, they're I'm basically... Not. They're the culture. They are a post-need, post-scarcity society, but they've recently succumbed to a serious threat, and their empire has fallen. Thus, they are the Shattered Empire. But they still have crazy, unbelievable tech. So that's their deal. And the mechanoid hive is the thing that I and a lot of other players don't really like. They are killer machines of unknown origin who constantly reproduce and spawn and just have no job, not no thoughts, head empty, except kill people. No one mm. knows who control them. No one knows why they do it. There are a lot of theories. They're just there. They're super fucking annoying. Uh, I often play with them turned off. And then there's what Kel was talking about previously, the insect gene line. The insect gene line, if I'm not mistaken, is they're based on some natural insects someone found on an alien planet, but then they did this whole the old lady who swallowed the fly thing, and they decided to weaponize them to fight the mechanoids. Now the insects are on a bunch of planets, and they'll kick your ass, and they're super annoying. And if you do something like decide to build into a mountain, if you dig out a mountain base, they can basically burrow into your mountain base and kill everyone it's super fucking irritating wow. i i hate them uh, i turn them off nine times out of ten just like i turn mechanoids off nine times out of ten like i just don't care about that but we're gonna go with sort of the vanilla loadout here and we're going to generate mm -hmm. that all right so now it is generating the world and it shows you what content i have you'll see i have no mods loaded and i have the core game the ideology dlc and the royalty dlc and here we go this is the world we're going to exist on. This is our rim world. Don't implicate me in your crimes. You'll notice it has a whole bunch of uh, <laughs> a whole bunch of named areas, sometimes which are very funny, sometimes which are very interesting. Uh, for instance, down here we have the tangled black goose rainforest, and over here we have the gray antelope jungle, the orange jungle. You, you'll just see like a lot of random ass names it's it's flavor Which corner of the screen would be the best to block with our our picture I'm, I, while we're doing this i'm tweaking our layout top I'm right maybe it. okay now if you want to go hardcore okay you can s click select random site so if you really want to role play the whole our ship broke apart in orbit and dumped us here and we didn't have a say where we land you could do that I do not like doing that. That's bullshit. But you'll see that the world has a whole bunch of different areas on it, too. Again, there are tons of mods that add tons of biomes, but we're going to work with vanilla right now. Um, this is temperate forest. And by the way, the globe does follow the general rules of, you know, if you're at this latitude, it's going to be colder than if you're at this latitude. So here we are near the middle. And one of the things that you want to check when you're deciding where to settle is the biome. We're currently in temperate forests. Uh, the terrain, which is flat, which is good. Uh, there's a river in it. That can be good. The kind of stones that are there, 
you get you can get really granular with where you go and the average temperature now the thing that's uh, really nice about this temperate forest is it says the growing period is year round so there will be no winter you have to get through if this is what you want to what you want to do and a thing that's also super important is making sure you don't settle too close to any of these established townships right here because they really fucking hate that if you settle like right next to them like right there if i go to this little purple town here called caveworth who is currently neutral with me as you'll see in the lower left corner if i decide to settle right there they will start to hate me and won't stop hating me until i move which can be a problem but you I don't mean, want to you could also blow them up but you could uh... also blow them up yeah I don't want to settle too far from folks because I do want to do trading sort of things with them. And I don't want to settle on mountainous terrain because that'll force me to live in a mountain and that will bring out insects and I fucking hate insects. So I think a good place uh, for, especially if you're beginning, a good place to settle is on a road because roads make a difference in this game. And you'll see that this, this road here is like asphalt. This road here is dirt. And so I'm trying to find like a good, decent place to settle. I think I'm going to go with, this shouldn't be too bad. If I settle here in a temperate forest, let's see the terrain again, year round growing, decent rainfall, lots of forageability, animals can graze. So if I decide to go into ranching, they can just eat the natural uh, flora that's around. There's a stone road there, as you can see. The terrain is mountainous. That's kind of a down. Special features, there are caves. So I'm definitely going to have to deal with insects. But I just want to show Amanda insects anyway. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Because there are one, two, three, four, five places, six places that I can go to easily to trade. And all right. Uh, Spike, where yeah. do you normally make your base? I like to make it around the equator in a place with year round growing. And from there on, it can be whatever I want it to be. I, I'm pretty flexible. Okay. Now I usually like, I usually like mountainous bases. Um, and which is why I turn off insect infestations. Um, and then I like to find a mountain area that has both granite and marble because granite is the strongest rock. And marble is the prettiest rock. Correct. Um, yeah. The, the the rock kinds absolutely matter. Rock opinions. Rock opinions. Now, mm -hmm. here's the part. This is not vanilla Rimworld. This is DLC. This is Idealigion. Idealigion is a bad word. It's it's not easy to say. It does not roll off the tongue. But it's the best way to describe what's going on. Now, you can play vanilla Rimworld with no ideology, <laughs> but I like ideology, so we're gonna do that. And it says here. You know, you can do a custom ideology, you can create a custom one, or you can create a custom fluid or custom fix. Fluid is, it starts off with a basic tenant and you can add to it as you go. Fixed means I'm going to be very rigid about my ideology and I'm going to land with a whole bunch of rules that I need to start from the very beginning. Fluid is more flexible, fixed is more rigid. Simple as that. Now, down here, if you're not the kind of person, if you want to play with ideology, but you don't want to go through the trouble of making an ideology, you can click all these preset ones. So if you just want to play classic ass room world, you can select that unity family, human purists, the high collectivist. So you, you really like drugs, but you want to work yes. towards a bigger good. So this is like the hippie commune one, the high collectivists, the human purists are kill everything. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to remember none of this. <laughs> so it's for everyone's benefit i see i see but like and then it has like levels of ideologians i'm going to select classic like because like the, the colonists get the belief system of classic rim world and that'll be easy and you can reform you can have a religious reformation during the game so and then here are all the other ones the the cannibals that's an ideologian the purist flagellators you know, techno utopians the nudist recruiters, the feminine ravagers, the cowboys. So you can be a female supremacist murder gang. You can be somebody who just wants to, you know, raise cattle and be left alone. You can be a tree worshiper. You can be people who are psychically powerful and blind themselves to increase their psychic abilities. You could be a bunch of furries. You could be a naked man eater. You could be a transcendent humanist. You could be mole people, mole people. But again, for the sake of Amanda, I'm going to select classic like because that'll make things easy. And we'll go next. And here is where things get hairy. 
this is when we are now actually selecting our colonists. The most important thing to keep your eye on is the team skills box at the bottom because you want to spawn at the very least with someone who can shoot, someone who can do medicine, and someone who can build. Okay? That really fucking matters because if you spawn with someone with a group of people where those needs are not met, you're in fucking trouble. Now, you'll see it just has randomly generated some people here. The thing I always keep an eye on is that they have as few health conditions as possible and as few incapable ofs as possible. Because RimWorld is kind of absurd in the sense where if you have a character who is incapable of cooking, they will refuse to cook even if they're starving to death. You know, if you have a character who is incapable of sowing plants and farming, they will refuse to sow plants, even if it means that next winter they will die of starvation. It's it's kind of silly, but that's how RimWorld works. So the person we have here, I'm not going to be too granular and anal about this. I'm just going to go with what they give me. Here's Inga. Inga has a sister named Ivana who is down here in the left behind category. The selected will be our colonists. The left behind will be people who are on the planet, but we do not control and we don't know where they are. So that's just sort of flavor for the storytelling because there can be times we might get a radio message from her sister, Ivana going, I've been captured by pirates. Come rescue me at this location. Like that's what room world's about. Ignis fine. Uh, no health problems. She's incapable of intellectual and artistic and intellectual might be an issue, which means she cannot research. Which Name her pancake. I will do that. Let's Thank go with Pancake. You. Her name is now Pancake. Oops. Let's turn off the caps lock. How about that? Here we go. No, so, keep those cap locks on. <laughs> her name is now Pancake. Okay. And then down here, we have, okay. Hmm. hmm. Okay. So now we have two people. Name capable. her Gord. Bored? Gord. That's what she's shaped like. Gord. Okay. This is Gord. And Gord isn't thrilling that, me that's not how you spell gourd oh i thought you meant gourd as in gordon okay y yes let me mute uh what kind of mailer this is what i got Amanda, you know you did. i know i didn't i got lazy yeah. okay so there's gourd um and i have to again, mute myself in two spots and today i decided fuck it yeah Y'all get to have this raw peek into my life where my mom asked me for envelopes Amanda, uh, oh, sorry, uh, Gord here has a couple of traits I'm not thrilled with. Uh, creepy breathing. Traits are a thing in RimWorld where it's basically it affects how your colonist interacts with the world and other people interact with your colonists. And Gord kind of sucks. Not hardcore, but kind of. They have creepy breathing, which means it'll be very hard for them to make friends. And they have slow learner, which basically means they're fucking stupid and it takes them forever to learn Mean. Things. <laughs> I'm not going to randomize them. If I was playing with my playing a game by myself, I would just randomize it because fuck this but eh. up here it looks like wow pancake also has creepy breathing they also have iron willed which means they will not lose their minds nearly as often as anyone else but they also have misandrous which means they don't like men they hate yeah yeah and our third colonist is named shield and this is gonna suck for shield because shield is both kind and a fast learner no, and they are going to be named Pop Socket. <laughs> Pop Socket. Okay, well, Pop Socket is both kind and fast learner, and it looks like because no one else is up for the task, Pop Socket is going to be our doctor. Fortunately, Pop Socket can also cook and shoot. And we do have someone who can do construction at level 10. I believe that is <laughs> Gord. So this is how we're gonna go. And on the on the planet, we have Pop Socket's ex girlfriend, uh, Annabeth. We um, have um, um, a, a lover of Annabeth. That's interesting. Um, no, we, you're going too fast. I have to name them all. <laughs> we'll never see these people, though. I don't know. Okay, fine. But yeah. Uh, Mason, who is the son of Pop Socket, which might make, seem kind of weird because Mason is 61 and Pop Socket is 36. But keep in mind, this is a world that has stasis. So it's it's easy to believe that Pop Socket went had a son went into stasis and that's why Pop Socket's son is now older than he is. That's a thing that can happen in Rimworld. And here's Ivana. We've talked about Ivana. Ivana, ooh, Ivana is bad. 
Ivana's really if y'all want to see what a really shitty Rimworld character looks like you're looking at it right now and Ivana is old like not just in how many days it's been they've been in stasis but genuinely old they're biologically 83 please name her thermal printer I don't know if I could fit that thermal P how about that that's fine all right um Ivana really fucking sucks You'll notice that their childhood, these are their, these aren't traits, but these are things that affect what they're capable of. Their childhood, they were an organ farm, which means their body was used to grow organic impulse for wounded mercenaries. Uh, Same. It's given her a high biology thing, but it makes her unable to hunt. And in her adulthood, she was a model. She modeled clothes and jewelry for advertisers and was also used as a physical blueprint for characters in virtual reality simulations, which gives her a boost to artistic and social, but it means she can't do fucking anything. She can't doctor, she can't cook, she can't construct, she can't, grow, she can't mine, she can't plant cut, she can't smith, tailor, craft, haul, clean, research. She can't do anything. She's useless. She's worse than useless. And again, worse than that, worse than that, all the things she's incapable of, she also fucking habitually sets fires. She's a pyromaniac. She's terrible. The hits keep coming. Yeah, same, same, yeah. same. And uh, on top of that, so it's not enough that she's useless. It's not enough that she habitually sets things on fire. It's not enough she also has an annoying voice. She Again, has, same. Um, she has multiple health problems. She is frail, which means she can't move and can't manipulate very well. Being, According to Matt, being gay or bi takes up a trait slot. Being straight does not. Not anymore. They changed that, by the ah. way. We'll a new update. But so uh, Ivana here is, she's fucking terrible. She's terrible. She is dead weight. She will do nothing. I, um, I forget if I'm being sorry, I heard asexual. You... Okay. Uh, being uh, asexual is a trait, and I forget if that's in the base game or if that's in mods. Um, I think it's base game, but for folks who are curious, uh, the update, the 1.4 update that is coming, it has changed it so that does not take a slot anymore. Ah. But uh, people still do have uh, sexualities and preferences. Um, so with that, ooh, excuse me, with that done, we have now created our characters. Well, we haven't created them; we've selected them. And we're gonna click. Also, um, I, I'm upset that you keep ignoring their names. <laughs> oh, sorry, Thermal P. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, so we're we're launched in with Pants Cake, Gourd, and Pot Pocket, and you'll notice this is very cute. Um, okay, I think I finally got our little talking heads in a spot. I like them. Okay, this Format is cute. the basic thing. This is their ideology. This is what they follow. This is what they want from life more than anything <gasps> and so they have some precepts they have to live by which is they think corpses are ugly the sight of a dead person is horrible Judgmental. that means i will have to get rid of any bodies or put them someplace where they can't see them they do not want to eat insect meat that's disgusting marriage name when they get married because they can get married um marriage name which one is taken usually man's we won't be fucking doing that tynan how do I change this? Ah, can't change it. <laughs> I'll have to change it later. <laughs> um, physical love free, which means you they can fuck anybody free. they want. Don't worry, I can change it. And the roles are the Dalai Lama is the name of the leader. Hmm. And the moral guide is called the Monk of Freedom. These are all randomly generated. Nice. Anyone who's familiar with Dwarf Fortress, that should make sense. And they have some rituals. They have the eulogy of freedom, which is what they call their funerals. The dance party, they call it the Nova Sionic Festival. And the drum party, which they call the Liberal Jub Jubilee. And the funeral happens whenever it needs to. The dance party happens every once in a while. And the drum party has a specific date on the calendar. So they can build, they have relics, which basically means things that are important to them culturally that might spawn on the planet that we can find and go collect. That is their ideology, and like I said, this ideology can be altered should I wish it. Uh, you can go through a reformation of your ideology, but that is what they. Believe. Um, what do you usually do with your ideology, Spike? Oh, it depends on what I'm feeling like. I've been playing with an ancient uh, Egyptian ideology for a while, but um, I, I have like the um, ideological, but vanilla expanded ideological. 
but what ideology meme um expansion um which lets you uh have your religion have orgies yeah yeah um, i have that too uh, so my people frequently have orgies um, to there celebrate will... whatever they believe in. I'll be yeah, right back. Be... I'm getting a root beer. Okay, there will be no orgies, unfortunately, because that, as Cal mentioned, is uh, modded content. So the, these characters cannot have or orgies, but there's a lot of stuff out there to enable things like that. Um, so let's start. Uh, I like that uh, if you do have the pregnancy mod, um, people can get knocked up because of the orgy. Yeah, that would only make sense. Yeah. Okay. And this is the average start, the average RimWorld Enjoyer's start. A little bit of text comes on the screen that says, the three of you awaken in your crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. Bad news, everyone. We're out of root beer. Oh, no. And I stepped on an egg. Sometime later, you land on this unknown <laughs> No rainbow. commentary, no acknowledgement of my egg. What? A piece of the shred- as pieces of the shredded starship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. So this is the most basic of basic RimWorld starts. And up there we have our three colonists we've chosen. We're gonna click OK. And bam, bam, bam. Our colonists have landed. And their random pet is a cat. And the cat is named Despoiler. And the Good cat, cat name. And the cat is five years old. And you may have noticed, what the fuck is that next to our colonists? That's just a mega sloth. It's a giant sloth. Nice. It's just there. He's just hanging out. He's just nice. hanging out. Now, the first thing I like to... Oh, fuck. That's not good. Anyway, the first thing I like to do is I like to check out how things are looking. Um, we are in mountainous terrain. There's lots of mountain passes there. And lots of mountainous areas we can live in, should we so choose it. Now, Again, I mentioned before, yeah, I mentioned before that since we chose mountainous, there are probably going to be insects, and I was correct. These are them. These are the insects. These are the mega spiders. They the look like neopets. They they suck real bad. They suck real real bad. The insects suck. I cannot deal with the insects as I am right now. They will definitely kill all of our colonists if we go and try and mess with them. Yes, I can. Yeah. Mike? Yeah? You've been streaming for an hour. Yeah? <laughs> that was a lot of menus to get through. Well, I had to explain them all. I guess so. Dang. But this is it. We are now finally an hour later playing Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, when you are playing it, when a person like sits down and starts playing it, That'll take them three to five minutes. Once they oh, got I'm everything. sure. I just thought it was funny. I, I looked at the time real quick and I was like, what the fuck? So this oh, year... I don't know, Spike. I frequently spend like 20 minutes making decisions I mean, about like what, yeah, what my know. ideology will be like. and Like I will like, spend an hour finding... in character creator for Sims 4. I get it. Yeah. But okay, so here we are. Now, let's just go to the bios for these folks. Now, I'm going to change this so that... I changed their nicknames to be the nicknames we chose for them. All right. So this person's nickname is now Gord. Her title is Space Merchant. Okay. This person's nickname is now Pancake. Her title is Scout. And Pop Socket, Pop Socket Lawless. Pop Socket Lawless, Space Bartender. There, see what I mean? Doesn't that just like fucking fill you with the need to tell a story about Pop Socket Lawless, space bartender? Okay, mm -hmm. now we're gonna do a quick review. Look at everyone's various um, abilities over there on the left. We'll see who's good at shooting because one of the things that we spawn with are guns. Pop Socket is the best shooter, which means Pop Socket is gonna get the bold action rifle. Um, Pancake has a shooting of five. Gord has technically a higher level of shooting. Level six means capable amateur. But the thing about Pancake is Pancake has this little flame next to shooting, which basically means they have a higher learning factor. They are interested in shooting and they will very quickly outpace Gord if given a chance. So they, Pancake is going they to- They want to come out blasting. Yeah, and Gord is going to get the knife. So everyone is now equipping their shit. The first thing you got to do is- Equip everyone. Everyone should be good to go now. And we also spawned with food. These are packaged survival meals. We have 50. We spawned with wood. 
We spawned with components. We spawned with money. We spawned with medicine. And we spawned with a flag fest. Now, there are a lot of philosophies on who should be getting what when you first start out. I'm Give going to try everything to pancake. <laughs> no, pancake sucks. Uh, pancake is my whole world. Give her anything she wants. My philosophy, my philosophy right now is that the most popular, the most rather important colonist, primarily because his medicine is at seven and he has his shooting is at seven, is Pop Socket. Oh. So Pop Socket is going to get the flak pants, which give him some armor. And he's also going to get the flak vest, which gives him some armor. And he is also going to get the flak helmet. He's just the most important guy right now. So he's going to get everything. And now I need to find a place to live. This is incredibly important. And I'm gonna be honest, this whole time I thought you've been saying flight pants, and I was like, damn. F L A stylish. As in, you know, flack from No, fire. I get it now, but I was picturing okay. Pop Sock in flight pants. Very stylish. I like to keep near the middle of the map because bad dudes will spawn in at the edges of the map and make their way towards you, and the longer it takes them to do that, as far as I'm concerned, the better. Um, there's not a lot of super great places to live. So I'm just going to be in the middle here. I'm just going to just be basic as shit and put something in the middle. And I'm not going to dig into a mountain because I don't feel like spawning more insects. Now, Me uh, things are scan are scattered all over the map. I'm going to allow all the meals. I'm going to allow all the steel. I'm going to allow <laughs> all the wood. Make sure I have all the wood here. Because we're going to need all this shit and we're going to need to start gathering it and we're going to need to be quick about it. The thing that's currently concerning me is the pet that we spawned with, the cat. The Can cat we eat it? Probably going to die if we don't move fast. Because over here, we have a warg. A warg is a heavily muscled wolf-like creature with vicious unnatural claws and an absurdly powerful bite. They will only eat meat or corpses. If disturbed in the wild, they are very likely to attack. If the warg gets hungry, the first thing it's going to go for is our cat. Well, then we should eat the cat first. Well, we have tons of food. We don't need oh. to eat the cat just yet. But, I mean, that might happen, but we don't need to do it just yet. Okay. I just meant more as a principal thing. It's our cat. We eat it first. As I, I, I remember uh, when I, I played a game where I was explaining RimWorld to Molly. Um, I made us in the game, and our cat spawned. With dementia. <laughs> oh no! A cat it was with like, dementia. So, yeah, so it would just be like we'd randomly get messages that are like, "So and so is wandering because of dementia," um, and it's like our poor cat. Uh, okay, so what I have just told everyone to do is I've told everyone to start building a little quick shelter in the corner. These three spots on the ground are sleeping spots. They literally don't get beds yet. And over here is an animal sleeping spot. So when the cat finally decides to go to bed, it won't go to bed outside where it will be eaten, like fucking guaranteed. So <laughs> let's go to work. Everyone should be good to go. Everyone is going Great. to haul. Everyone so when I, after I move, I kind of do want to get a cat. And now it's like, sh I always name my pets after food, but the spoiler is a great cat name. So here's Pots, Pop Socket putting on all his stuff. Gord is starting to haul everything to the blueprints and to the uh, walls that we are building. And Pop so serious about this game. Doesn't have any time for my jokes. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure we actually get to some playtime. Oh, see that construction botched. The construction was botched there by Gord because Gord's building ability is not that great. Oh, what? No, it is. It is 10. It's skilled professional. And they keep fucking up. Oh, you know why they're fucking up? They're puking right there. Do you see them puking? Ah. They're vomiting. They're vomiting because they have crypto sleep sickness. They just got out of hypersleep functionally. They got out of stasis. And so they're not going to be as good at things as they once were. This warg is way too fucking close. I'm not thrilled. Uh, I'd really like to get some walls up. Gord is eating now. I, I really saw like to get a raccoon. Some walls. We can replace the cat with the raccoon. You actually can. But... Uh, <laughs> For now, I'm, I'm. We have a backup I, cat. A backup the spoiler. Will not stop fucking puking. Okay, and if we can just get that wall built. <laughs> the little store's open for the cat. Now, it, uh, I really don't like how this fucking warg is just like chilling out here. Okay, so we now have an indoor area. I think to myself, I do not want this cat built, eaten rather. So we're going to go to area one, and we are going to set area one as indoors, and we are going to restrict the cat to staying indoors because the warg will not go away and he's freaking me out 
So we're going to click the cat and tell the cat you can only hang you out. You should keep water. your pet. You should keep your cats indoors. Don't let them be outdoor cats. It's exactly. not good for them. Spay and neuter your cats and don't let the warg get them. I'm actually going to make a fucking mistake here because this warg is fucking freaking me out and I don't like it. So what we're going to do is we're going to get everybody out here. We are going to we're going to fucking fuck around and we're going to see if we we're forced to find out. Okay. <sighs> uh, Pop socket and pancake are the ones with the guns. They are now going to, oop, nope, 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 don't do that. We're going to put them here. You know what? There. Let's put them like that. We're going to, or oh, the thing keeps getting fucking closer. I hate this thing. Okay, everybody go like that. And now we're going to tell everyone but Gord to attack this thing. Oh, oh okay, the warg has now revenged. What that basically means is, we attacked it and now it's angry with us. And so we have to figure out <laughs> what that fucking means. It is now maddened in Manhunter, which basically, mean, oh, we've got, see, if we wanted to, we could just leave it to die. That might be the best choice because you'll notice it is now bleeding at 140% of its blood volume per day, which means it'll die in 16 hours. So everyone go inside and wait for the ward to die. You get to eat it? If we want to, we can eat it. Everyone go inside. Go inside. Go inside. Go inside. Go inside. Jesus Christ, Pancake, go inside. Pancake, oh. no! Pancake, no! Oh, shit. Oh, shit. That that thing might... Oh, my God. Okay. Um, Pop Socket, we're gonna put you... <laughs> What's up? Go here. Oh, fuck it. Pancake, go here. Pop Socket, go, go here. Or rather... Thank you. Fuck. Okay. Okay. All right. We did it. We fucking did it. All right. We did it. What we're going to do now is refuse people. You can't go in there. You can't do that now. All right. The warg has been shot a shitload of times. It'll die in seven hours. I am scared of wargs because wargs can absolutely fuck your shit right up. There's just like nothing you can do at a, after a certain point. But we're, while we're trapped in here, I just don't want it near here because the last thing I want is it to decide to eat me at an inopportune time. But while we're waiting, while we're in here and waiting, we can actually get some stuff done. Instead of sleeping in spots on the floor, it we says, can get some beds. Does in the corner say you're unroofed? Unroofed? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes, it does. We have not finished. Yes, there's no there. roof. Ah. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to undraft everyone. I don't, think, to... I don't think the warg actually got pancake. No, the warg did not get pancake. It's getting this fucking door, though, with the shit. Pancake, repair, repair this door, please. <laughs> Okay, With its last uh, dying breath, it will break down this door. It, it, it actually might. It actually might. Um, Priority is repairing steel door. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, it's... Don't you go outside, you fucking suicidal assholes. Okay. Um, draft them. And we're going to repair <laughs> this door. We're repairing... Oh! Okay, it's going... See, it's like outside going insane with rage right now because it can't reach us. So it's just like... Yeah, it's like dripping... There notice it's dripping blood everywhere oh, there's yeah. blood everywhere and we there's... eat it that's just gonna be my question for like everything can we, can we just lap the ward. No, can, can we, we lap the, the blood off the ground I'm... actually you know what i'm gonna fucking play the hero right now and i am going to tell pancake to go outside you're gonna and... play the hero and tell pancake to go outside go. okay oh there we go no 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 don't do that pancake that's that's enough okay and so now, while we wait for that warg to literally bleed to death as it screams and rages outside, we are going to clean up, build beds. People will be very happy. Is that, that a rat? Bed. This? This is definitely a rat. <sighs> this is a five-year-old rat, if you can fucking believe that. <gasps> a legend. A legend. Now, as this thing bleeds to death, um, you'll notice that, that the there's this old rat. Thing big weird thing in the corner this is a chunk of the ship that crashed to earth okay or rather to the rim world and i'm going to tell everyone to deconstruct it and while well, they're finished eating their meals up oh, and gourd has gone to deconstruct it and what that basically means is we're going to get useful materials from it if you've ever seen anyone play rim world you've probably seen them make stupid jokes about how eating without a table is a war crime that is because yeah uh, it's, it's a, a mood debuff. It's a ah. mood debuff. Moods are the most important things about your colonists. They're the thing you're going to have to manage more than anything. 
moods determine whether they have mental breaks and mental breaks can be terrible and annoying Ain't nothing was wrong with eating on the floor yeah but these guys you'll notice what he currently is not happy about is an unsightly environment <laughs> that it is dark inside that he ate without a table he has a buff currently for the first week and a few day work week in a day um which is called initial optimism which just is like whatever i have to rough it right now things are tough and very low expectations which means my colony is very poor and he understands that so he's not expecting gold-plated television and stuff so we're gonna go ahead and unpause and they are going to build a table and a couple of chairs that they can eat from and since we're currently at that tech level so I'm was a cat just a for cart. like mood oh that's interesting gourd right now is doing meditation which i really don't want her to do there's literally no reason for her to be meditating so i'm going to make her stop and make her build a table and chairs and now pop sockets uh needs darkness is gone the environment is still unsightly is that ward dead yet no it's still raging it's still raging it's got three hours before it uh dies this is pretty fascinating because usually these things pass out at some point instead of just dying right away but See, now they're kind of <coughs> out, waiting in here for everything to be over, basically. They're waiting for everything to be over. And, wow, there's a pair of pants out here. I didn't notice. Um, I'll just tell them. Wild you. pants spawning in the wood. Now, this is really rough. This is really, really bullshit. Like, everything is really bad right now. But hmm. there are a few things I can tell them to do to sort of, like, pass away the time. I can tell them to smooth the surface, for example. Uh of where they're currently living and that will make anyone with the construction job like you know make things slightly nicer oh the warg's dead fucker okay so he has passed out from blood loss or rather she has passed out from blood loss and I, i'm going to mark her to be hunted because she is now helpless and cannot hurt us and the door is open but they're still right now they are socializing so they don't want to go do the job i told them to do because they're fuckers <laughs> okay but this is important. This is actually really good because now we don't have to worry about this war. Is that like a busted up structure to the right? Yes, it is. These are ruins. These are ah. ruins. This is an ancient generator. And this is an ancient sandstone wall. And there are a few more ruins sticking around. This over here, for example, is a ruin. I don't know what this is. It's, it's, it's a ruin. Um, these are ruins over here. This is a ancient operating table, an ancient refrigerator, and an ancient okay. kitchen sink. And here is a busted up old car. We've unearthed a Viking refrigerator. Okay, so someone has killed the warg, finally. The raccoon did it, a hero. The raccoon killed the warg. And what that means now is, Amanda, you were talking about, can we eat it? We sure as shit can. So we're going to go to production. Thank God. Go to go to production, and we are going to select the butcher table. We're going to put the butcher table outside, because that way, when we cook... Uh, the blood and guts of butchering won't affect the cleanliness of the cooking room, which is, it's a weird thing, but it matters how clean you are in Rimworld Matters. And let's put a little chair there. And we'll just, hopefully, Gord will start building. And Gord Bunch has weenies. Started... None of these assholes could survive off Dollar Tree hot dog. No, they really couldn't. And we're going to chop down this tree because it's in the way. And now that we have a table to we have a production spot which is a butcher table uh we have to give it a bill and the bill basically is what do you want this place to do and i'm going to tell it to butcher creature and you go into details and i can tell it to butcher every single animal that it finds <laughs> if there's an animal anywhere a dead body go get it and turn it into food or i can tell it to butcher human-like corpses as well but for now i'm just going to tell it to do animal corpses and to keep them from wandering off to every edge of the map, everyone who's ever played Rimmer will tell you the bane of their fucking existence is these idiots wandering off to the far reaches of the map and then dying there. I'm going to tell them to not kill anything outside this ingredient radius. You see this mm -hmm. white edge that just spawned in. Yeah. That means if, it's, if the animal is on the outside edge of that, they will not go and get it. But since the ward is on the out, in the inside edge, they will actually go and kill it. Pancake and Pop Socket are still hauling over all the stuff that we got so here we go they, this is a stockpile zone by the way the stockpile zone is just oh and here's pop socket and he is butchering the warg and that will produce a whole bunch of meat and some warg leather 
wolf and skin a tarp yeah. a rolled tarp now because we did that we have a whole bunch of meat and Rimworld is pretty forgiving, but it it's not meat doesn't rot. I do forgiving. like the fact that that vomit has is still on the floor. Yeah, the vomit has to be be wiped up. Basically, someone needs to actually. That's what the clean. cat's for. Ew. Look, <laughs> but what I'm going to put down now are probably That's one of the how most cats important are, man. This is it. This is the one of the most important things in Rimworld. This oh, is the oh, research oh. bench. The research bench is how you stop living in a hole in the ground. <laughs> I'm going to put down the research bench and people need to be comfortable when they're doing this. So I'm going to put down that and put down a stool and hopefully Gord will get around to building the research bench pretty soon. But also since we have all this meat, we need a way to cook it. And the simplest way to do that is to go to production where all the production things are Microwave. or not, sorry, temperature. Um, you grab a campfire and you just stick the campfire inside. Wait, and- inside? It's not going to like smoke everybody out um they'll be okay with it mostly i just don't want anybody cooking and then you know suddenly <laughs> something shows up to murder why does them. it still say war revenge in the corner oh because i haven't clicked it away oh okay it's like a right. notification and you'll see <laughs> notification <laughs> war revenge i should note that since we have a cat since we have a cat the cat will probably snack on some of our raw meat but that's fine so <laughs> everyone now has You'll see they have their bed. They went went and they are now sleeping in their bed. So they have survived their first day on the rim world. And, you know, here's the giant ground sloth. And he's napping too. Or rather, she's napping. And over here. Pulsing tree. Yes. This is something that will come up. Uh, This is the anima tree. This is kind of when rim world kind of gets a little magic y. It is a rare tree with warm, skin smooth bark and long, iridescent leaves infused with bioluminescent microorganisms. Anima trees develop a unique form of psychic symbiosis with surrounding life forms, allowing them to grow in a wide variety of biomes. If a person, psychaster or not, meditates near an anima tree, it will grow anima grass. Once you have grown 20 anima grass, you can turn the person who has been meditating into a psychic. So this is how you become a psychic in RimWorld if you do not want to co- become psychic by a mechanical or technological means. Mm. Meditate at a tree. That's so if you want to play a bunch of cavemen, you can still have psychics. I see. Yeah, everything is going really well. But now that we Because have- only, only people who have a tribal background can meditate at the tree. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we're going to deconstruct these ruins, you noticed, Amanda, for free free stone blocks. Because this little area that I've built, this is safe for the first night. This is great and everything. But it will not do the job for the foreseeable future. I see. And, uh, so we need, we need to protect ourselves. We need warm clothes. We need to start growing things. We need to start doing a lot of things to protect ourselves. Because pretty soon the attacks are going to start coming. And the attacks can be really gnarly. And now that the campfire Should've is up, killed that raccoon on sight. I'm going to start cooking simple meals. I'm going to tell them to cook simple meals, use everything that's available. It'll, t- you know, whatever meat's available, except for human meat and insect meat. Because remember, when we did our ideal religion, we don't like insect meat. And we're going to tell I did them. I not remember. No. Do forever, just okay. as much as okay. you can. Cook as many simple meals as you can. And. Okay, because these uh, package survival meals, these are going to run out. There will be a time where there are no more package survival meals. And now that we have the research bench up and a place for everyone to sit, we're going to click research. And this is also a very important thing for RimWorld. Oh. level. Look at depends. all those trees. Yeah. So basically, it's like, so where do you want to start off? Do we want to start off learning smithing? Do we want to build a harp? Do we want to just do fucking I drugs? I want to harp. Oh, what, what did you say? Drugs? <laughs> Yeah, yes, we can absolutely do drugs. We're going to do drug production and build a drug lab for basic drug synthesis. Further research is required to make specific drugs. So we're going to tell whoever's in charge of research here, who can research? Gord is our researcher. She fucking sucks at research. I'm going to actually tick that off because there are more important things for her to do right now. (laughs) And we need to get going on growing zones because in room world, there are, oh my God, farms. And it really matters. You have to make your farms. And let's just make a small farm here and a small farm here. And these farms are going to grow. Hmm. There are a lot of things we can grow. Uh, I would like to. 
<laughs> not that many things. Aww. I'm going to go with... I love fried okra. It's too mucilaginous for me. Rice? Use and... baby words like the rest of us. It's like snot. Thank you. Snot. It's gross snot on I it. love I those snotty tubes. Ugh. Love them fried. And now that we are actually cooking meal, and you'll notice down here, it says simple meal four. It tells you what's in it, warg meat, and it warns you it contains meat because you can be, you can have vegetarians in room world and they'll be very upset if there's nothing to eat except stuff with meat in it. They may even choose to starve instead of eat it, depending Maybe on how strong. chew on a tree. Look, they're right there. Gord is just fucking relaxing socially. Like, shouldn't you be doing something? Okay. Pop socket. No, unfortunately. Did you, uh, Spike, did you remember to set their schedules? um not yet no right now they're it's just very basic so i'm just letting them do whatever and hey the giant ground sloth has come over to say hi what's up uh can the you ride it chakra. you can ride it actually <sighs> uh, you can't only, in the base yeah, game yeah, but only not in the base game mod called giddy up which is basic it's basic bitch mod like everyone so, has so to. so when you did your horrible war crime mother yes did, you started out from this point or uh, no, my horrible war crime mother, Daddy War Crimes, the mother yes, of yes, mur yes. murder triplets, she started off as naked brutality. She was dumped gotcha, on the planet. Gotcha. Boats and but like the harder version of this. Okay. Yeah, much harder. So you can start here and end up there. And here's another thing. A group of travelers from the Southern Lantwitaria tribe is passing by. So let's go see them. Oh, okay. <gasps> They're blue. Well, they are not blue. They are wearing masks. Oh. Yeah, this is part of their ideology <laughs> that they were. I like the so, I like the idea of being one of the colonists and just going <gasps> intruders. They're blue. <laughs> they're wearing and, masks. Yeah, so you'll see here that they are wearing a visage mask. It's good to be wearing a visage mask in accordance with my beliefs. And this is Park the Barkeep. So we're going to look at Park's bio, and you'll notice he believes in unity, Archaeo Theravada, and this is. Uh, their belief system, which is why they're wearing the masks. And you'll see the kind of thing they believe in. They are against organ harvesting, slavery, intentionally blinding people, intentionally scarring people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They are against displaying dead bodies. And they are against eating elk. So if I served them, made them eat food with elk, they would be in a very bad mood. So this is their specific ideology. There are many ideologies on this planet, as you can see on this list. List rather, uh, the free way is ours. That's us. But everyone else believes in all kinds of things. Did we like, get a chance to name our religion? Um, we did not get a chance. It was just oh. assigned to us because I oh. used a new one. But once we reform, we can rename it. Okay. Now you'll see uh, pop socket and pancake. There are busy. I'd like planting. to start worshiping the cat. That's entirely possible. Okay. Uh, Pop, so Pop socket uh, and pancake are busy uh, planting rice and cutting down trees. And that matters because, you know what, let's just cancel this, this floor smoothing because we don't need to do this anymore because we, we have plenty to do. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put down structures, floors, floors. That's what I want. Okay. I may regret this because this is incredibly flammable, but it matters. It makes people much happier. I'm going to put wood floors down in our little current hovel. I don't I know if this is a good idea, but it's what I'm doing. And you'll see Gord immediately starts building the wood floors. While Popsocket and Pancake are still farming. Heel Root is basically the magical cure-all uh, medicine plants. It's very labor intensive, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> we currently have good medicine. We have technological medicine from an industrialized era, but that may run out. So we don't want to ever have injured colonists. And then suddenly we have no way to treat their injuries because that's how you get infections. And that's why sometimes, you know, we have to Change chop my people. Mind. Let us worship the rat. Yeah. The rat is actually, if you would like to tame the rat, we can have someone try and tame the rat. That's all right. Yeah. Um, Seems like that a big rat, distraction at oh, this phase. Is now trying to tame the rat. Oh, okay. Pop socket is giving it little bits of meat, warg meat. How's it going, Pop socket? <laughs> a warg fed rat. Oh, tame failed. It don't, he only had a 16% chance to tame the rat, but. He's too powerful for us. It's fine. Okay. So here we are in our beautiful, uh, floored, walled comp compound 
where everyone. So we didn't tame the rat, but we did give it a taste of org flesh. Gave it a taste of org flesh. Exactly. And he will keep trying over and over and over, by the way. So this is something he's going to keep doing. Now, what I like to do is I like to go to production and get going on stone cutting as quickly as possible. This is just a personal thing because in my opinion, one of the dumbest fucking things you can actually do is have walls of wood in your colony. I just think it's a horrible idea. I think it's cruising for a bruising. I think that's how you get your ass killed with wooden walls. And that's because wooden walls are flammable. You'll see pancake is neatening up. Pops. Uh, there we go. We have made the stone cutting table. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say, what have we got around here? We have slate chunks and sandstone. Sandstone is not powerful. Slate is. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell them to uh, make... Double check that because I think slate actually might be more fragile than sandstone. Sandstone chunk of rock can be cut into usable blocks. Let me see the sandstone blocks we took down. Um, sandstone is a relatively soft rock and chips easily, it says here. So I'm not going to use sandstone. Well, compare it to slate. Well, there are no slate yeah. blocks. Uh, to look at. So oh. We're going to go ahead and make slate blocks once, and then we can we can see. And you is know that what? More barf on the ground. Um, that's probably dandelions. Oh, dandelions and barf kind of look similar. Here come here comes Gord making some slate blocks. And it, look, everyone's going to bed. Except for Gord. Their second day is over. Their the rat day. is the rat asleep. The rat is asleep. We worship you know, the rat from afar. Oh, Bill complete makes slate blocks. Gord has made some slate blocks, so let's see what they are. And see, Pancake and Pop Socket are upset because Gord came in late and woke them up. Yes, that matters. It's stupid, <laughs> but it okay. Slate blocks, blocks of solid stake, a dull looking rock that chips easily. So let's see how powerful it is compared to the other one. Max hit points one thirty, and sandstone. Oh, it is slightly more powerful. You are right. I thought for sure it would be sl it would be slate, but no, you're right. It is sandstone. So yeah, we are going I think slate is the shittiest rock because it's um, fragile and ugly. Um, so they don't like it. Uh, so what I don't like to... the fact that these dandelions are pulsing. <laughs> you can actually turn that off. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to. I do not have enough blocks to do this, but I am going to tell them to do it anyway. I am going to fence in the as much as possible of our current compound as I can. And again, this is one of those things where it's like, if you don't do this, it, it, you're just like, after a certain point, how do I not describe you as anything other than fucking begging for it? Um, <laughs> when the bad guys come, this will all make a ton more sense. I am making what is... One of those things, it's like a hard counter to being attacked. People Oh yeah, like we do in Minecraft sometimes. Not Minecraft, uh, don't starve when we would try to avoid the dog. Yeah. So we currently have seven meals, six meals, okay. And now we are we are building we are we are building the the walls to protect us. Uh what I'm going to do now though is I'm going to make sure Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to build a steel door here. And then I am going to do, oh, no, you know what? Let's do it this way. The defenses for the colony. Now, these are basic ass defenses. These are extremely basic defenses, but they will do the job. What, what are these they? are? These are spike traps. Oh. Spike traps are if anything steps on them, they will take damage to the point of possibly being killed. For most, most uh, raiders, especially early on, will not be able to survive this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put as many steel doors as we can bear here. So we can rearm the spike traps or replace the spike traps when they're triggered without triggering them ourselves. Okay, so that is going to be the most basic initial defense that we have. Okay, Gord is finally up and Gord is now building. And Popsocket is back to trying to tame the rat. He has failed again, so back to planting heal Again, root. it's just too powerful. Simply this is why we powerful. worship it and respect it from a distance that is safe. Now we have five meals left, and I'm going to interrupt Pop Socket to hunt this raccoon because we need more meat. I'd like to avoid eating the survival meals as much as possible. The survival meals can last forever, like literally forever, whereas the meals that we cook are good for only two or three days. Um, the survival meals are good emergency food. Now, is this 
Have you, like, hit it at all? You Wait, Kale, didn't you say that there's, like, multiplayer room world? Uh, that's a mod. Okay. So, How the heck uh, does that way... work? Um, it's basically you're all controlling the same colony. So, like, Spike... Because since you have to give orders to people individually, like, mm. we could all pick one of these people yeah. and then have them to focus on different jobs um, to make sure everything got done. I see. So it's more just, like, managing together. Yeah. The rat has entered the maze. The rat is going to very possibly... Oh, hey, some vi some visitors. Hi. Okay, bye. Anyway. They're friendly, so that's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, we're almost done with the planning, and I'm really trying to, you know, hurry along the building of the walls because I don't... The thing about Room World is when people get hurt, um, they don't always recover all the way. Sometimes they can lose limbs, they can lose eyes, they can lose their nose, which doesn't super harm them that bad, but it makes them ugly and it makes people treat them worse if they're disfigured. And if they lose a Me. leg, they're stop it if they lose a leg they're slow if they lose an arm they can't manipulate as well there's just a lot of little things and also they can just get scars so if they get badly hurt enough and it doesn't heal properly they can develop a scar which can be painful and it can Im Im Blue be person. An <gasps> did they take our raccoon no they're holding something they else fitz. fitz has a little question mark over his head because fitz would like to trade with us oh okay. and i thought they were taking our shit I'm going to go and find who is the best person to talk to Fitz. And it's Gord, because Gord has the highest social skill. So, Gord, I'm going to interrupt you for a minute. I'm going to see if Fitz has anything we want. So, this is what Fitz has brought with him. Fitz has brought some packaged survival, some packaged survival meals. He's brought one component, three medicine, some meth. Yeah! <laughs> uh, reinforced barrels for guns. A tech print, which is basically a piece of technology you need to use to make something. A pair of fucking pants, that's ours. Um, and a dog leather ladies hat. Fitz doesn't really have anything we want. So You don't want a dog leather hat? Believe it or not, no. <laughs> uh, I also do not want any meth. So we're going to let Damn. Fitz go on his merry way there. Can't live my fantasies in real life or video games. Okay, where's Popsocket? Popsocket, where did you go? I don't even. What I need you to do, Pop Socket, is wait. Who is who is doing this? Butcher. Oh, that's why it hasn't been butchered. Pop Socket, I need you to butcher that raccoon because we're only down to two meals. There we go. Okay, so that's that's barely enough for a couple, but that'll do. Now it's time to start getting our hunt on. So let's click open the animal tab and see. Whoa. These are all the, oh God, there are spiders. Yeah, these are the mega spiders. Okay. Um, these are all the animals that are currently on the map with us. What these are spiders our taste animals. like. Spoiler the cat, and this is the wildlife. Now, we have some alpacas. I'm not going to hunt the alpacas. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try uh, and let convince. Me, uh, let me mute. Oh. I got to mute in two places. Okay. I'm going to convince the alpacas to live with me. The donkeys might be nice too, but right now we're going to focus on the alpacas. However, I will fucking kill every single gazelle if I have my way. Okay. Gord has got a weird I return. Welcome. Gord has got a weird sleep, sleep cycle. And oh, is the rat is all the way over there now. And so, anyway. It's we're okay. Still not, we can we're respect still the rat from a distance. Yeah. So, we, are, we have very little food right now. I would like it if Pop Socket Ooh. would go hunt the gazelle, which he is doing. Pancake, what are you fucking doing? You're not doing anything. Okay. You don't want anyone idle, ideally. Um, what can Pancake do? Pancake can also hunt. So I'm going to turn on hunting for Pancake, and I'm going to turn on plant cut for Pancake. And do I want you to craft? I think I do, because there isn't much crafting that can be done right now. So Pancake is also going to hunt gazelle. Gord is finally up. Gord is finishing. We're two days in now which means chances are very high that we are going to start being attacked and soon so i'd really like them to just like hurry up with this shit and you know what while i'm out here i'm going to have them harvest this wild healed root which is something we can use for cuts and scrapes and use and save our good medicine for stuff that really is she oh, laying down under a tree this fucking gazelle just triggered one of our self-defense traps and it's going to die soon ah! so i'm gonna go ahead and tell it to be hunted anyway Stupid gazelle. Why okay. is Gord lying down? Um, Gord is doing cloud watching. Oh. 
Oh, oh shit. It happened. A local rat has gone mad. <laughs> anyone it sees. And it is the, the rat we were trying to tame. Terrible. What a terrible. Oh, mighty no. God. He, yes. he can't so, be our buddy now. We can't. We'll have to kill him. So you'll see Gord and Pop Socket here are now <laughs> themselves from this rat. Gord, I'm going to say, it's, it seems to have sent to focus in on Gord, so I'm going to tell Gord to run. And I'm going to have to <laughs> run, oh. run from the rat. Now, Pop so- now it's centering in on Pop Socket. Where the fuck is Pancake at a time like this? It's centering in on Pop Socket, so I'm going to tell Pop Socket to run, and I'm going to tell Pancake to try and defend Pop Socket. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! This is terrible! <laughs> Look at them go! Look at the little rat chasing! Run from the, the crazed rat! Kill it, Pancake! Kill it! Kill it, Pancake! You have to kill it! You have to defend! All right! We got it! And that this is, is what happens when you don't pay proper tribute. Once I now that was like the best thing you could possibly do there. Um, that is how I strongly recommend people handle early on threats, threats when <laughs> early on threats where you have someone kind of kite the the threat, the rat. and well the shooting. And if it focuses on someone, you know, if it focuses on game facts, how to deal with a rat. So we're going to undraft everyone. Everyone's going to get back to work. And oh, Pop Socket immediately starts trying to kill a nearby gazelle because I told him to. Okay. Now Gord goes back to building the walls. We have two dead. Wow, we have two dead gazelles. So hopefully Pop Socket shows up to uh, start cooking soon because we actually have no non emergency food right now, which is not thrilling me. Um, we also have no steel, which is interesting. So we're going to have to get some steel, which means we have to mine. So let's go There's ahead a steamy and. Steamy butthole on the ground. That is a geyser. That's a geyser. If we really wanted to, we could build a steam generator over that steamy hole. Mm. If we really wanted Love to do that. Love a steamy that. hole. Everybody loves a good steamy hole. Oh, hey, it's a guinea pig. Kill it on sight. <laughs> we do not need to kill the guinea pig. Okay, so you'll see our little compound is like coming together right now. Our little compound is finally sort of developing a little bit of safety here. And I like all the corpses by our front door. Yeah, these are all the gazelles that I've told them. They will spoil in two days. That'll be plenty of time for them to get butchered by Pop Socket and turned into food. Um, what I'm really we, concerned can we, about... Can we eat the rat? <laughs> we we can eat them just like that. We can. We can. I wouldn't recommend it. The okay. guinea pig is in here. We're going to have to kill it. Um, the guinea is pig... eating our, eat our crops? crops. It, it'll eat our crops if we let it. And so it'll That's either it should have been on uh, site. Oh, it's, it's out now. Good. Okay. So, so Spike, here's some good news. Um, the vanilla expanded um, uh, team have already updated most of their mods for four point for one point four. So, oh, really? um, that's red. It's red. That is red. Uh, yeah. it vanilla is red. expanded is the team that does most of the mods that Spike and I use. Amanda, like they have a whole bunch, like, um. Vanilla expanded animals is they just like add a shit ton more animals to the game. So it's not just a cat. So in the base game, you get a cat, but in the expanded animals, you can have a Maine Coon or a Siamese cat or a Max cat or a Munchkin cat. Like, uh, and instead of like a Labrador or a Husky, you can have a German Shepherd or a Pug or a French Bulldog or and a so bunch it looks of other. Like you'll different be here. Ones. Well, Gord thinks you should give your faction a name. Yes. What would you like to name our faction? Rat Respectors. Rat Respectors. And the name of the settlement also needs a name. Tomb of the Rat. Home of the Rat. Tomb. Tomb. Yes. Tomb. This is where we oh. took down a mighty god. Yes, where we took down a mighty god. Yes. There we go. So, your faction is now known as Rat Respectors, and this community <laughs> is now known as Tomb of the Rat, it says here. And everything seems to be going pretty decently. I'm shocked we have not been actively murdered as of yet. Because, oh, oh shit. Oh shit. Oh, that just happened real quick. Oh. Okay. This is another Spoke rim too world. soon. Yeah, this is a rimworld thing. Oh. Popsocket flirted with Gord by describing her as a shining valley. Gord was attracted and is now Popsocket's lover. Gross! 
Popsocket and Gord now want to sleep together. Consider assigning them a double bed. Okay. Um, so they can go, uh, fuck right off. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and deconstruct these two Are beds. they going to like fuck right next to poor Pancake? They will. Yes, they are. Oh my they God. Will. Inconsiderate. They will. they will absolutely do that. Monstrous. Why are we enabling them? Gord is... Now I'm going to have uh, Gord deconstruct the two beds. And I'm going to have Gord build a double bed. And they will fuck <gasps> right next to Pancake. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> so we're going to chop that up. How much wood do we even have? We do not have enough for the double bed, but we will soon. Okay, so Pop Socket is here cooking. Um, I would really like it if Gord would prioritize working on the wooden double bed so they actually have a place to sleep tonight. If they have a baby, we're eating it. By the way, uh, I think you uh, might enjoy there this. Are, there are no babies in base game RimWorld. Right. Um, um, the DLC, that, there's a bunch of mods that add um, people getting pregnant and having babies. I love how my but, like um, but, like my feelings about babies like immediately go out the window when like we're playing survival games. It's real life. Like babies are perfect, and I love them, and I want to be surrounded by twenty babies. And then the game, it's like, no, eat it. <laughs> uh, and then um, in uh, but in the new DLC that's coming out, they're gonna have. Um, pregnancies and stuff in there um, or genetically engineered babies. Um, so um, all those Did mods are about to become the obsolete. Sims? Did y'all ever download the Sims 2 baby barbecue mod? No, I didn't. Uh, I, I have heard of it. I never it. downloaded it I downloaded because it. I was not... Yeah? Yeah. Okay, and now see, Gord and Popsocket are now sleeping together in one bed. Criminals, like they, oh, sinners. They are, they are fucking right, right now. next to Pancake. Right next to Pancake. That is how it was going to be. Um, the little hearts above their bed mean they are fucking. And they are fucking right next to Pancake. And yeah. uh, this is actually really good. Actually, is it? You know what? I'm not going to say that. Um, the thing about RimWorld is that relationships are double edged swords. Gord and Popsocket will now be really, really happy all the time, basically, because they're in a good relationship. But if one of them dies, the other one will spiral into uncontrollable depression for about a year. Week. To the point where they start the, just, the yeah. thing the thing is is also um they can get divorced and cheat yeah, on yeah. each other. Yeah, and um, that can also so depress them massively. The rat would never have approved of this. So they have just fucked. And so let's go ahead and check on their needs. You'll see there, they are in a terrible barrack, which is what they call where they live right now. If there are more than two beds in a room, if there's more than one bed in a room, they call it a barrack. They have very low expectations, so they're still fine. Um, their initial optimism is still there. They really like their lover, Pop Socket. They're comfortable in their bed, and they got some lovin', so that they're in a good mood. Uh, so, uh... Right. Amanda, one of the mods I frequently use is called Romance on the Rim. Um, and it adds in like if two two are lovers or uh, or uh, they can go on dates or they'll randomly go up to one another and like kiss each other while they're at work, nice. um, and that will give them a good mood throughout the whole day. Yuck. Okay, so you'll see right now, um, Gordon Popsocket got to bed a little late, so they're they're sleeping in while Pancake is over here fucking seething i'm certain and cutting down uh logs to do things just i imagine being very pissed off that the lovebirds have decided to spend the morning in oh debug log that's interesting okay i i'm going to turn off the debug log this is something i always have open because like i say i usually run a lot of mods but i'm not doing that right now mm -hmm. so we're going to go ahead and just leave everyone to it here and things are going pretty darn well pretty darn well uh we have the visitor he's gone though um let's see now that we have the basics down what i like to speed towards is individual bedrooms because yeah that would they, sure be nice they would yeah believe it or not <laughs> maybe somebody doesn't want to be in the same fucking room as these idiots fucking each other so what we're going to do is we're going to just work with the general shape that we already have do that oh shit it finally happened the first raid has arrived 
The Rota Treaty has arrived nearby. They will prepare for a while, then attack, prepare a defense, or attack them preemptively. And this is kind of like the heart of RimWorld here. Okay, your first raider in vanilla will always be one person who is tribal level. And he is angry at me. So again, this is whole sort of tying in calling it a storyteller thing. Um, you'll see that he doesn't like that we have cut down a bunch of trees here because of his belief system. Trees ravaged. In the past quadrant, we have destroyed a horrific number of trees. We are the blight on we are a blight on this universe. Fair. And so he, he hates that I did that. Um, and he's angry he hasn't been near a tree near a while, for a while. He does not have pants on. Well, good news. Look, there's a tree right there. He doesn't have pants on and he hates that. He wants to be wearing pants. But he's happy about holding a steel club because in his faith, that is a holy weapon. So let's check out the Nova faith, his tree connection. This is why he's so bizarre about trees because he loves trees and thinks trees are the best thing ever. And since we're cutting down trees, I like to think that's why he's here. He's mad that we're cutting down trees. And you'll see all he has largely the same sort of um, values that we do. And he's going to hang around up here for a while and then come down and try to attack us. I can tell you right now, it's not going to go well for him. It's just not. <laughs> because uh, he is going to try and probably enter through our death area there. Mm -hmm. And it'll probably kill him right away. We probably won't need to do a thing. And there we go. So here comes Gord. Gord is building the areas where the private bedrooms will be. Yep, now she's just chilling out. Okay. And I'm going to be right back. I just remembered I have pumpkin pie popsicles. Oh, that sounds nice. It is. And oh, oh, the tribes people from the Rota Treaty are beginning their assault. So. Again, the name of the game in Early Rimworld is to avoid as many injuries as possible. You just don't want someone injured right now. So I'm sending everyone back inside, and they're going to stand there, and they're just going to wait for Gore, for this dude to come and kill himself on our traps, which he just did. Okay, he did not die, though. What he did is he dropped everything he was holding. So he has silver, he has a steel club, and there's Toll the Archer, who has just died. This little gavel right here next to Tor toll's name means he's considered guilty which means he has wronged the colony I what return. that means is that he can be banished executed or arrested by us and nobody will have a problem with can it. we eat him we actually can we can't yay eat him. i do not plan on eating him but we can eat him okay he's going to die in five hours because of the damage he has sustained from our from our trap now let's look at Tor. Let's let, let, rather let's look at Toll and see if he's worth anything. Okay, wow. Hmm. Okay, this is very much an edge case, but I'm going to not attempt to convert Toll to our ideal religion and attempt to incorporate him in the colony. And this is why, pyromaniac. I really <laughs> fucking hate pyromaniac. I hate that trait more than anything. I have lost multiple colonies to someone just burning it down. I am not going to take that. Even though his shooting is 14, that's really, really high and really, really impressive. He is a master with a gun, but he is not worth having around if he is literally going to burn shit down. Hmm. And I already have someone else who is not capable of caring, which caring is medical. I do not want two out of our four colonists refusing to fucking, you know, treat other colonists wounds. That That's a recipe for disaster. So I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do with Toll is I'm going to just fucking get rid of him. All right. Gord with her knife is going to go over here and melee attack Toll to death. She is just going to, and she will not feel bad about it because like I told you, Toll currently is considered guilty by the colony. So they don't mm. consider it a bad thing to melee attack him to death right now, which she will do. All right. And Toll is now dead. We have stabbed him to death for trying to attack us. We are totally cool and happy with it and fine. It is a good and happy thing to do. And now the problem is we have to get rid of the body because remember our ideal religion oh, is yeah. Freeway. And Freeway says corpses are ugly. The sight of a dead person is horrible. We have to get rid of him before, you know, he starts literally driving people insane. There are a lot of ways to do this. I personally really like burning them in crematoriums, but I do not currently have access to a crematorium. 
So what we're going to do is we're just in the gonna... river. You know what? There is no river. You can do that. That's actually a play. A lot of people, if you put things in water, they do rot faster. So that's actually a thing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a grave out here. Well, they're going to make a grave. After they wake up, they're going to make a grave. And let's see if Gordon Popsocket have sex in front of Pancake again. Oh, and let's just take this. Allow that. We'll take his club too. We'll sell it to somebody. So this little idiot attacked us and uh, he is dead now. He has reaped the whirlwind. And well, Popsocket is going to cut down wood and Gord is going to go back to building the walls for the new area. Oh, we have another visitor who's going to sit here and stare at us with our dead body that's just like chilling out over here. Oh, and there, there he goes. Oh, oops. He's, he put, told the archer where we put dead animals after we hunt them because it is just the dead animal disposing ground and they consider Toll an animal. So they're going to dig a grave and then put him in it, but not until the grave is dug, obviously. And there we go. All right. Yeah. They're, they're, they're very built. They're very focused sensibly on, um, building their new bedrooms while this new visitor is here let's trade with this visitor uh does he have anything we want wow he does actually he has a lot of fun stuff he has an assault rifle uh -huh. i i'm thinking of making a terrible mistake um the assault rifle is really important i'm going to see if we can't sell a few things to get this assault rifle it matters that much okay i am buying an assault rifle from this dude for uh -oh. you may have yeah. one Nero over. Oh really? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to uh, I'm going to yeah. um Yeah, Nero's in the chat and it's like, oh no, this looks good. Oh, no. Yeah. Nero, uh, it's a fun time. I'll let you know um about the furry mod that I use, um, which is great. There we go. All right, so I am going to there. We have now bought an assault rifle, and you notice relations with Southern Land Witteria have changed from zero to one. So they like us a little tiny bit better because I traded with them. Pop socket, I believe, is the one with the good shooting. Pop socket is now going to equip the assault rifle. And Gore and Pancake is going to equip the bolt action rifle. And Pancake is going to put the rev revolver in the there we go. So now we we are much better defended. I I always emphasize defense when I'm playing this game because it's it matters. It matters a lot. How um, I mean that makes sense. I mean you remember the weird forts I always build in Minecraft. Yeah. So what I'm going to do right my now, um hunting stands. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm no going my pops to, home. Okay, so uh, let's see. This can be a bedroom. I'm not going to be very scientific with it. There, there are three bedrooms. Um, we are going to deconstruct doors for the bedrooms. Like here, here, and here. And there, um, we can get going can on Can you these. move the beds, or do you have to deconstruct the beds? Oh, you can move the beds. Okay. I've seen so many games like this, we had to deconstruct okay. the Gord has finally built the, there, we're burying this guy. We're burying him just outside our base. Now we don't have to look at him, now we won't suffer a mood penalty for having a dead body in the base. So we are now... Just building, 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 and let's put some let's put some steel doors. I like steel doors because they open at a decent rate, but they're not like super expensive to build. So you'll see. Oh, and we have some berry bushes in here. Let's just Ooh. harvest the berry bushes. There we go. Harvest botch because you're an idiot. Okay. And yeah, pretty soon we will. Oh, how much wood do we have? Not much. Let's cut down a little bit more wood. And we can get ourselves a nice pair of bedrooms, which matters a lot. Like, I, I know I keep saying that matters because it does. All this stuff matters. Like, Rimworld is a game where there are a million different tiny little bullshit things that all contribute towards people's moods and people's survivability. And yeah, and having a nice bedroom will, like, up their mood significantly throughout the day. It might make the difference between someone being a useful member of the colony and someone literally setting everything on fire and burning down your stockpile and dooming the entire colony like whether or not they had a nice bedroom oh and they fucked a little bit just there we missed it but um yeah things are going pretty well right now we have some defenses we have some farming we haven't done any research but i want to build them nice bedrooms before we get going on the research You'll notice I built three rooms here, by the way, even though I only have need for two bedrooms because Gordon and Popsocket sleep together. 
that's because one of the important things to do in early game room world is start recruiting people. And nine times out of 10, when you're recruiting people, they're going to be people that tried to raid you and you need to keep them in prison and basically talk them into joining you. Where are you two going? Oh, you're cutting down stuff. Okay. And that means I need to build a prison. I like to have the prison away from the main area, especially storage, because if it, there is a prison break, which again is a thing that can happen. If there's a prison break, the prisoners can grab weapons from your stockpile and attack you with them. There's been more than one case. I have not personally had this happen because I'm not a fucking idiot. And I know how to play the game. Um, there's been cases where people have gone to the stockpile, grabbed doomsday weapons, fired off multiple rockets inside a player's base. That's what you get for keeping doomsday weapons on the floor. Exactly. That's kind of a rimworld thing. Everything is kept on the floor. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so here we go. We're getting ready to build these bedrooms just for fun. We're going to re reinstall the bed right now. I like to reinstall the bed very close to the uh, very close to the door just to cut down on how much time it takes for everyone to get where they need to go. There we go. And we are good to go. Let's put some doors on there. Let's put some floors down. Wood floor again. Again, I'm cruising for a bruising with these fucking wood floors because the wood floors are very flammable. But it's quick, it's easy, and it looks good. So people like it and they like their bedrooms. Okay. Oh, and our rice harvest is coming in. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to tell this bill to chill out normally i was having them cook it until forever instead i'm going to have them do it until there are 10 meals available there we go and that'll make things easy and this is really good this is very important we are we are things are going good now and see gord very quickly building the wooden floors no stupid you sleep with pop socket remember we have to set the owner here to there we go Gordon pop socket and pancake pancake no I, I just on. remembered this isn't my bed just wake up in a cold sweat basically fucking idiots okay so pop socket and Gord are now in their own bedroom they should not have the barracks debuff but they might think their bedroom is shitty I'm, I'm, I can almost guarantee they think their bedrooms are shitty so yeah awful bedroom but they fucked so it's fine <laughs> uh minor pain Gord why are you in minor pain oh right Gord spawned with an old gunshot injury. So they're always going to be in a little tiny bit of pain unless I get them addicted to a special drug which which um cures old wounds or I literally cut the leg off and <laughs> replace it with a Wait, these are the only options. These are the only once someone is scarred, these yeah, are the only that, options. that scar is going to hurt them until we do something to get rid of the scar and the ways to get rid of the scar are remove the leg or give them a miracle drug that they'll be addicted to for the rest of their life yes okay but limited so options up. but okay yeah. okay and here is something that will only happen if you have the royalty dlc installed i have had a quest spawn it was our first quest it is called the hunted baron i'm clicking it and it says Jovian Osdus, a baron of the Green Empire, is calling from nearby. His guards were killed in an ambush. He escaped, but he is now being followed by a man-hunting monkey. <laughs> Jovian wants you to keep him safe at Tomb of the Rat for a few hours until his shuttle can come to pick him up. He will bestow eight honor on whoever accepts this quest. This is enough honor to receive the royal title of Yeoman and all benefits that come with it, including the first level of psychic powers. Okay. You can say no to this. I'm not going to. I'm Lucky going to accept powers this. powers can only like be bestowed upon you by like rich bastards. No, you can also work. Yeah, them. basically. You can also work I... the tree, or you can find a neural link when you're doing a raid on an ancient building. There yeah. are ways to take powers without ever interacting with the shattered empire, which is what the green empire is. It is a shattered empire faction. So but to... but they're the easiest uh, way to get them yes, if you don't true. have the tribal um, meditating at the tree trait. And right now, what we're going to do is we're going to decide who gets to basically accept this quest, which means who is going to get the honor, which means who is going to get the human title as far as the empire is concerned. And I'm going to accept it with Gord because Gord has the highest social ability. All right. 
And Jovian Ford just gets won. everything in life, doesn't she? <laughs> oh shit! Jovian, no! Oh 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 no! Oh, Jovian has spawned what? down here with the insects. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. Oh boy. Oh wow. Okay, everyone, this is an emergency. Get your shit and get down there because Jovian's about to fucking die. Oh wow. my god. Yeah, because he sp this is Jovian. He has spawned down here with the insects. That's not good. That's real bad. Jovian is going to die. Okay. Oh god, Jovian, what are you going to do? Um fuck. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to die is what he's going to do. Jovian is going to fucking die. Um <laughs> Fortunately, Jovian spawned with a few things that might help. Uh he has some psychic powers. One of them is Vertigo Pulse. Which yeah, sorry, Matt. Uh, there's a lot of lag because there's a lot of moving parts to this. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and use vertical pulse on this insect that seems to be coming right for him. Okay, so eh, pow. Okay, so now it is. It's basically this insect. It has psychic vertigo, which means it's not good at things right now. <laughs> Unfortunately, there are two much larger insects right over there. And can you control oh, this dude, or is this just like you gotta watch this happen? Him. I can control him. He is temporarily part of the colony. Oh. I'm going to try and get him as far out of the caves as I fucking can. Uh, he is definitely going to get downed. He might die. Okay. So we're gonna. Oh wow. No, they're not attacking him. I'm amazed. Holy shit, that's incredible. All right, I take it back. Jovian is not gonna die, I don't think. But let's get him up here. Let's get Pancake Gordon Popsocket down here to assist in his extraction. Run, Jovian, run! No, he's gonna die, take it back. Run, Jovian, go. Holy shit, run, Jovian, run. Fuck, <laughs> shit, run, run, my dude, run. Oh my God, okay, no. Okay, so this this thing that he, that he vertigo pulsed, the thing we saw, see, cued melee attacking Jovian. This thing was coming for him and he gave it a vertigo pulse. He's, it's still got this psychic vertigo, which is why it's over here fucking throwing up. That's the thing that probably saved him. The only yeah. thing that saved him was that vertigo pulse. Jovian may be far enough now from this, which is the hive. The hive, like, sort of like, that's where the insects come from. That's where they spawn, the hive. Um, they defend it if you get too close to it. Jovian may have just fucking escaped by the skin of his fucking teeth here. That is something I did not think would happen. I thought he was fucking dead. But it looks like he's made it. It looks like he's made it. Oh, and here comes the man hunking, hunting monkey that was after him. <laughs> here comes the man hunting monkey. Oh, Maybe the bugs will get it. Um, the bugs want to get it. That much is true. So we're going to put Jovian up here. We're going to get Pancake, Gord, and Popsocket over here to defend him. Did the monkey make it out? Did the monkey make it out? There it is. The monkey also evaded the insects. Okay. And so we're going to kill this fucking monkey. The bug's still after it. Oh, the bug never is mind. I gave up. It. Okay, my assholes can't hit anything. What the fuck? And ah, damn it! Gord never picked up the never picked up the rifle. That's annoying. Ah, kill it! What the fuck? Jovian here, help! Vertigo pulse this monkey. Okay, so now maybe we can kill it. All right, we've killed the monkey that was <laughs> we attacked Jovian. We did it. We saved Jovian. No one had a single scratch on him. So this monkey is dead. You'll see it had Scaria. This is a recurring RimWorld issue, okay? Scaria is basically space rabies. <sighs> a disease which causes affected creatures to enter berserk rages. A creature with Scaria can be cured through a special medical operation, but it must be downed first. If not treated, Scaria kills its host five days after infection. The disease poisons the flesh and rots the skin, so creatures killed with Scaria have a chance of rotting instantly upon death, so they cannot be butchered for meat or leather. Fortunately, that's not what happened. Um, we have the monkey. The monkey is dead, and we can eat the monkey. We can yeah. eat the monkey with rabies. There Hooray! are no flaws in this plan. Yeah. So, everybody is now going to just go back to... We saved Jovian. We've saved uh, our friend from the Shattered Empire, and I really didn't think we would, but we managed it. He was actually even helpful with his Vertigo Pulse psychic ability. Hopefully we will get an equally useful psychic ability when 
uh, when Gord gets their Psy link from the Empire as a reward. Oh, yeah. look at that. Jovian immediately started helping us with research. Isn't he a nice Yay. guy? Oh, and here's the shuttle. This is Jovian's shuttle. It has just landed. It says the shuttle has arrived to collect Jovian. So Jovian, thank you so much. We were so happy we were able to help you. Jovian is now going to climb into the shuttle. Another rat. Another rat. We respect the rat. We do respect the rat. And Jovian is on his way out right now. Well, where the fuck did Pop Socket go? What are you even doing? Anyway, I don't know what he's doing over there, but there. So the shuttle now takes off. Goodbye. <laughs> and there we go. Gord has received the title of Freeholder from the Green Empire. The title of Freeholder cannot be inherited. If she dies, no one will inherit this title. Inheritance matters. Okay, now the quest is now available for Gord's Yeoman Ceremony. The Green Empire is ready to grant Gord the title of Yeoman and the power of level one Psylink in a bestowing ceremony. The bestower will arrive by shuttle. The bestower will only give a title if any throne room requirements are satisfied. Yeoman does not require a throne room, so I can accept this right away. And, oh, there we go. The Shattered Empire has sent a bestower and some heavily armed guards. You'll Eat see. Them. Uh, yeah, so the bestower just, is now on her way, oh, excuse me, on his way inside. Uh, These are from the, so Spike, the Yes. I feel like we have shared the basics of Rumworld. Yeah, we um, have. And people now understand like the the general gist of it yes um let's talk about what mods we like um oh god um well the one i talked about before that allows you to actually oh it's time to bestow which basically means it's time for gord to get their side link so i'm gonna press begin Okay, um, the mod that I can't do without is Giddy Up. Giddy Up allows you to ride animals. RimWorld has things like horses and donkeys, but won't let you ride them, which I always felt was very ridiculous. And um, then Giddy Up lets you ride everything. So uh, my rat. characters ride wolves into battle. Um, I I think you can ride a rat. Like um, I remember before they updated it, there was briefly a glitch that let animals ride other animals yes someone posted a screenshot of just like 10 dogs all riding each other oh my god um, yes um so it's just a pile of dog um then um i i really liked all the vanilla expanded pack um th that's a team that makes multiple mods and they do little like touches to add stuff so um Remember, Amanda, when you were like, let's grow okra, um, and Spike was like, you can't. Well, with vanilla expanded farming, you uh, can. Um, so they added like, tubes. so they added like, they made like, um, the, the farming add stuff like chili peppers, because so that rats and other tiny rodents will try to eat stuff in your farm. Yeah, the um, spicy but, stuff. But if you grow red peppers, they won't eat it. And you then there's stuff them. like um and then uh you can grow um beets which will while they can't be planted in the winter, they won't die because of the winter. Um and then there's so they they just added all these stuff that all have different nice. benefits. Um, and then they added in coffee and tea, so your people can, like, grow different coffee, make themselves different coffees and teas and different drinks. Um, and then a whole bunch of, uh, so this things is a game with, like, lots different of mods. Yeah. Is there a mod yeah, where you can run so... an MLM? No, uh, but there's yes. a mod where you can run a restaurant and you no. can... No. MLM. Very different. And Kale said yes. Uh... Yeah, I mean, that's basically what the Empire mod is. Ah. Um, Where the fuck are you? Uh, oh. But yeah. Um, uh, and then uh, one of my favorites is called Pawn Morpher, where you can turn people into furries or other animals. Um, so uh, I said in chat when Nero expressed interest in RimWorld that um, my people, I mentioned that they have orgies. Um, if their orgy goes well, 
um, they turn into wolf or fox people, and their orgy celebration is called the Great Yiffening. Um, but yeah, um, um, in case you didn't, the, the stowing ceremony happened, and the psychic power that Gore got was not great, but it was the start of something. Uh, she got something called chunk skip, which basically means she can skip chunks of rocks. Skip is Rimworld for teleport. So she can yeah. skip chunks of rock or slag and scatter them near the target point. This is useful for producing cover during offensive operations. So she can basically make cover if we are attacking someone, which is fine. It's not great. Not thrilled. Better than better than a kick in the teeth. But uh, uh, hopefully the next psychic uh, thing she is blessed with, she'll do better because you can get up to six different psi links. And yeah so gord is now psychic gord is also a yeoman in the green empire which is fine i mean and right now you kind of have the gist of Drim rimworld that's everybody. pretty good for someone who like lives in a hole yeah yeah it is i have played a ton of rimworld so yeah I, I've heard. A, little, a little more smoothly for me than they might for someone who is brand new at this but suffice to say this game is super fun there it's incredibly changeable in that if you don't like something about it, you can change it. If you do like something about it, you can get mods that really emphasize that. And this is just honestly one of the best games it I've ever like played. It seems like the kind of game Simply if I live streamed it, everyone watching would just be yelling and crying like, no, all the time. And I'm like, what? Yeah, the problem with RimWorld is since it's been around for so long. Oh, and Gord is praying. That's interesting. Huh. Gord is praying in her room. Um since it's been around for so long you're gonna get these people like the fun hater club who are going to be angry if you do anything sub optimally but that's stupid that's fucking stupid ignore those people they don't oh, know I always what do yeah. and yeah so now we have bedrooms we have i put in some side tables and i'm going to put in more furniture because this furniture actually helps uh the people they they it makes them sleep better you'll see that if i build this wooden dresser it makes uh the bed it, it makes their their rest better and i'm going to build a wooden uh, dress with huh. a pancake as well so, yeah so we have harvested some rice harvested some rice rather we have built a whole bunch of we've made a whole bunch of meals for everybody and everything is kind of coming along nicely oh a guinea pig just fucking flung itself onto one of our wooden traps so we'll, we'll have to take care of that a we'll turkey <laughs> yeah and there's a turkey down there there's a male turkey and the female turkeys look different which i appreciate and everyone thinks it's going pretty well which means it's time to turn on research drug production uh we're going to go ahead and have who is our best researcher it was gourd we're going to have gourd do research now gourd is going to stop mining and start doing research things are going pretty decently and I expect an attack any fucking second now, <laughs> honestly. And you'll see over here, quest completed. With completed the Hunted Baron. We will close that. And Gord has received the title of Yeoman from the Green Empire. This yeah. is just what happened when the Bestower showed up. Yeah, notifications. Yes. And it talks about, basically it walks you through, here are the psychic powers. Here's how they work. Here's how to get psychic ability so you can use your psychic powers, blah, blah, blah. And then this tells me I had a great bestowing ceremony. Gord received no extra honor since there weren't many spectators, but I had a honorable bestowing ceremony, as you can see there, honorable. And it could have been one of four ranks. Terrible, unimpressive, honorable, or grandiose. And again, and stop me if you've heard of this one, that matters. Uh -huh. Received human title, you know, so people liked that it was a good, that it was a good ceremony. So, you know, oh, and he loves his lover. And he said he had an honorable bestowing ceremony. It was good. It, it was very dignified. He really liked it. So that's that. And you'll see our heel roof is growing very well. Our rice plant has been harvested. Our cat is happy. Pop socket and gourd are going about their business. And everything is sort of just kind of sailing along. But it's time to start thinking about the future of the colony. And when I say that, it means we're going to have to start recruiting people. Recruiting people <laughs> is, again, one of those things that's kind of hairy in RimWorld. Uh, you can get people who randomly crash onto the planet in drop pods like you did. You can get people who wander in and basically demand to join you. You can get all kinds of stuff. But what I'm anticipating right now is a raid. 
oh shit we had one of those random events we had something called a psychic a psychic drone some distant engine of hatred excuse me some distant engine of hatred is stirring. It is projecting a psychic drone onto the site through an orbital amplifier tuned only to affect females for a few days. Some people's mood will be quite a bit worse. So now Gord and Pancake, who are both the females of the colony, will have a low psychic drone mood penalty, which basically they describe as it is a scratching at the back of my mind, a voice whispering. I can only make out a few words and I don't like them. And there's nothing you can do about that until it goes away. Mm. So you just try and keep them as happy as possible. Um, so I have made three sleeping spots on the ground in here, you might notice. I am going to go ahead and say these are not for colonists to sleep on. These are for prisoners. Because I'm expecting, I'm anticipating prisoners. It's just a thing in RimWorld. You will wind up with prisoners. The turkey. And yeah, everything is kind of going along here. Everything's going pretty well. Where the heck is Popsocket? Oh, you're still trying to tame these alpacas. That's where he keeps wandering off to, to try and tame the alpacas. I'd really love it if he could. Amanda, I found a mod for you yes. in RimWorld. Um, I'm not going to tell you the name of it. I'm just going to link it in the Discord so you can see. Okay, I can't. Um, I, I'm full screen oh. in the, the stream. So. Oh, Okay. Uh, it's called Fancy Rats. Um, it's a mod that adds more rats to the game so that you can have um, a hairless rat. Oh, um, no. You can have uh, just all, all the different little breeds of rat. Um, there are fancy there, rats. Fun fact, there are not different breeds of rat. There are just variations. All right. Well, variations on rats. Um, that was just fun facts so, for the chat. Rat facts. Um, so yeah, the one of the mods is called Fancy Rats. Mm -hmm. um, oh, they're so small. Like, how will you even know? <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm imagining mostly like, they're a different colors. I'm imagining like a hairless rat in the wild, like that poor creature. By the way, what I'm um, doing right now is I'm toggling roofs. Um, the thing about roofs in RimWorld is, especially if you are digging into mountains, what kind of roof there is matters. You'll see that I have a light green overlay, which means I have a constructed roof or a thin rock roof above me. And that matters because the bugs, the ones that almost killed Jovian just now, they can only spawn in areas with overhead mountain, which is thick roof. So I never actually want anything important in the colony to have this dark green overhead mountain roof. Uh, so uh -huh. I turn this on to make sure any place I'm digging, I'm not accidentally uncovering overhead mountain. So that's why I did uh, that. So uh, another mod I found is um, Red Wall Races. <laughs> um where you can play as all the different rodent creatures in Redwall. Are they also racist? Probably. Probably. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to make sure I get all these components down Red here. Redwall made me so mad. I sold all my components mm -hmm. for uh for an assault rifle, which <laughs> I don't regret by the way. And while everything Have you going, equipped it yet? I have. Pop socket is carrying it around. Okay. And uh, let's see. How about a what else do I need? Ah, let's go um, an electric tape wrench. A mod that um Spike and I both use a lot is called Dove's Bad Hygiene, and it basically adds toilets and a hygiene need um to your people. Cause right now what is that um, in the base the spike game, traps? Um that well, is a turtle. That is a turtle. It was a turtle. It was a turtle. It's still alive. I'll designate it to be hunted so they can just kill it. And come. that that was really annoying. Uh, that was extreme. Chances are um, a lot of these animals are trying to get into my compound because they want to eat our crops, by the way. So that's what that's about. Rude. Yeah. But they can't get in because of we have defended ourselves. But yeah. Um, there is a mod that adds um, D and D races into the game. Um, so like elves and orcs, but also ithalids and um, the cat people, the tabaxis and the um, other ones too. 
Um, and then there's also a mod that um, has various types of cat girls. Of course. Um, there's also anime hairstyles. So yes, you can have Sailor Moon hair. Um, there's a robot mod. There's um, if so you many want things. It, there's probably a mod for it. Yeah. Uh, and there's Gord. See, Gord Someone, now, as a psychic, Gord so, now needs to worry about getting psi focus, which is what allows them to use their powers. So Gord is now meditating in her bedroom, and that's now how she you has get a reason that. to meditate. Yes, now she has an actual reason to meditate. Uh, yeah. Spike and I also both like um, a mod that adds fridges in the game. Yeah, fridges are very important. Yeah. You'll notice the food is just left on the floor. The cat's walking on it. <laughs> the cat's walking on it. It's just left on the floor. And um, yeah, it's 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 a little obnoxious. It's a little weird. But now, this is also important. This is a tailor bench. What we're going to do now is make everyone some hats! Okay. Uh, we're going to make two people hats, rather. We're going to make two cowboy hats, because this is RimWorld, after all. And we're going to tell them they can use whatever leather we've got. It doesn't matter. And we're going to assign... You know, Pop Socket. Pop Socket can do it. Pop Socket is going to make us some hats. Two hats. So Gord and Pancake aren't walking around with bare heads. So there we go. And he is using light leather. Okay. These are different. Um, kinds of and leather. so because Spike and I both watch uh, Mr. Samuel Streamer yes. stream Roomworld a lot, frequently joke mods get added based on whatever the theme of his stream is because since he's a very popular streamer uh -huh. um so right now he's doing monkey people versus zombies yep. and while looking at new mods i just found one that's called a monkey expansion and mm. it's like this mod adds bananas but not just any bananas Lots of bananas. Uh, and they're banana-shaped weapons, banana meals, banana drinks, banana power wow. systems. Wow. Yeah. Um, Sam Streamer is kind of mid-level difficulty to understand if you don't have a... And hey, check that out. Pancake is now wearing his brand new cowboy hat that uh, Pop Socket made for him. So we can click on his gear tab. And it's not a very nice cowboy hat. It is poor quality. But you know what? It's better than nothing. Because you'll see... It gives him more social impact and it covers his head. <laughs> so. um, someone has put in um, alien xenomorphs in the game um, and also predators. Um, oh. I'm going to make a couple dusters here. I need to make coffees. And we're going to have Pop Socket do that as well. And we can speed things up, speed through the sleeping. And hey, you know what? Despoiler shouldn't just be sleeping on the ground like that. Let's try and make Despoiler a cat bed. Let's go to furniture. Animal sleeping, animal sleeping, animal bed. Okay. And let's just make this. Do we have enough light leather for an animal bed? We do not. Do we have enough plain leather for an animal bed? We do. And let's go ahead and stick that in the corner here. Yay. So now they'll have a nice place to sleep. Okay. Oh, and Gord has to listen to that. As if cats care. They really don't. They really do not. Um, oh, they'll just watch you. Oh, hey, and look. So here we have some people who are belong to a different religion. Um, you can tell because this person is wearing looks a burqa. Like a, oh, I was about to say they look like a fire hydrant. They are wearing a burqa. Um, if you look in their gear, they're wearing a burqa. Underneath that, they're also wearing a veil. So, <laughs> you know, belt end suspenders. And they have a bird skin tribal wear, which is like, you know, a caveman shirt. Um, let's go ahead and see Fashion. what they're... Wow. Weirdly enough, this person who is doubling up on the modesty wear belongs to a ideology called the High Party, which is about male supremacy and getting fucked up. <laughs> that, that, that is their... College. Their, yeah, thing in life. And you can see here, um, yeah, some some stuff there is kind of, yeah... Which means, for example, men can have three spouses. They can have they can get married to three women, whereas women can only have oh, one. Um, one of the mods is um, because you can have your religion have polyamory, um, but there's still only double beds. 
So one of the mods is <laughs> a lot beds. of people fall like yeah, triple or quadruple beds. <laughs> like you just make the biggest bed possible. Like everyone can get in it. Um, yeah. So these people have look at all their their stuff. They they have a lot of smoke leaf circles, drum parties. They they get stoned and oppressed women. That's what the high party. People they get does. stoned, oppressed women, and play hacky sack. Yeah, they get stoned, oppressed women, and play hacky sack. That's their move. So they're here and they want to trade. So let's see if they've got anything we want. Um, no, we do not want a short bow. These appear to be very primitive people. We do not want your short bow. We do not want your pemmican. Don't want no short short bow. Short bow. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and just let them go on their way. Don't 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 don't. God, I remember my family was so scandalized by that song when I was little. <laughs> I want a short dick man. Okay. And things are oh, Bill complete cowboy hat make cowboy hat. And look at that! Now Gord has a little cowboy hat on. Psychic I, cowboy. Yeah, so now um Psychic Pop cowbow. more clothes for them. They're making leather dusters. And let's close that Gord. Wait, they has. just came in through our oh. doors? A yeah, they're friendly, so they can just come into our. Oh, our okay, cool. So we have friendly sensing doors, and yeah, yeah, yeah. actually, yeah, Rimworld has friendly sensing doors. Okay, and they have left us a, a gift. They have left us a uh, material called plasteel, which is important for higher level building. So that was actually very nice of them. Aww. And. Yeah, things are going pretty. I pretty saw the back of the turkey. I was like, oh, "Who's that?" It's like, "Oh, it's a turkey." There we go. And things are going pretty well. Let's see if we can't finish this duster today. No, don't make a roof. That's another thing you have to worry about in this game. Sometimes they'll try and roof in areas automatically. Um, I do not want you to roof in this area. Do not do that. Okay. And so. Now let's go ahead and deconstruct. So you'll notice I have slightly expanded the compound. This is how I like to do things. I like to, you know, increase the compound size. Hey, Amanda, a rat self-tamed. It is now designated rat one. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to- The chosen one. We're going to go to rat yes. one, which is name the rat. Uh, 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 God. Oh, Oh, it looks like we can't yet because the uh. rat is not. I'm going to tell the rat to stay in area one, just like the cat, because the rat is also. Will the cat eat our strong. rat? No, because they are. They both belong to us, so they won't. Uh. They won't eat each other. The self-tamed rat of legend. I'm going to train. Oh, the cat can't be trained to do anything because it's a fucking cat, and neither can the rat. <laughs> but, uh, but um, I if there were a dog, for example, I could train them to haul things. I could train them to guard me. You could train a rat to haul things. It just couldn't haul it very far. Yeah, it can't do anything useful. It'll guess, try especially. its little hardest. I'm going to go ahead and allow this. Did you read the and article about rats enjoying driving cars? I did enjoy. I did see that. Yes. That's very, did you read the article about the, how rats enjoy and prefer lingerie? Okay, I missed that one. Yeah. I Basically, they put um, little jackets on rats. They, they were crude little felt jackets, but uh, <laughs> when mating time came, uh, the males did prefer the females that had the little crude jackets. The conclusion, therefore, was rats, rats like right. lingerie. <laughs> that is enlightening. Thank you for sharing that secret with me. Okay. Uh, there is a mod where you can make clothes for all your animals. Oh, so. oh, 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 things just got oh, fucky. Oh, oh. We have a raid by the gunmen. They are attacking immediately. This is the gunmen. They have no guns. <laughs> let's, check out, let's check out Krista. Okay. Trista, despite being 56, has no health conditions. That's good. Let's see their bio. Oh, oh, hmm. I gotta say, I'm not thrilled with Trista. Kill on sight. Eat their knees. Yeah, they're, uh... They don't want to do much, man. Slurp on uh, their tendons. See, they don't do dumb labor, which means they will not clean and they will not haul. They will not doctor and they will not cook. There's just... The one thing they have... Uh -huh. going, well, let me look at... Okay, alright, alright. Here's the thing that we could do. 
We could recruit them and make them our researcher because they have an intellectual of nine and a passion. So what we're going to do is... Trap them in a research hole? We are going to draft everyone, put them here, and we are going to hope that they do not die by the hands of our uh, our wooden traps. Here comes Trista. Okay. Come on, Trista. Bum, bum. Oh, perfect. Okay, Trista has triggered... Oh, God, are you a fucking junkie? Let me see something. Because um, if they... <laughs> oh, okay. Death in six hours and no permanent injuries. That's actually really great. But I was concerned because she dropped some wake up, which is, again, it's meth. And I don't I want just... meth. I don't want addicts. Because yeah. Addiction is a very, very involved RimWorld aspect. And it's very irritating to get people clean. And But Trista does not seem to be an addict. Trista seems to be an all-around... Good choice here. So what we're going to do, and this is why I built this area, is we are not going to capture Trista. Okay? So there we go. We're going to capture Trista. Going to put her in our prison. We are going to tell everyone to undraft. Pop Socket, since he is a doctor, is going to immediately start tending to Trista. And hopefully I'll have him use the good medicine. I want him to use good medicine. And we are going to mark Trista, who is now... Although they are guilty, we are not going to execute them. We are going to mark them under the prisoner tab to convert. That is the most important thing right now. I want them to convert to our religion before we recruit them. Because it's very annoying having someone who's not the same religion as you attempt to um, be part of your colony because they hate everything you do. Okay. So you'll see Pop Socket is up there treating Trista. Stab quality, crack quality, all that stuff. Um, and there trista's pretty much taken care of and here comes gord to try and convert trista who yeah. wow right away reduced her certainty in her own religion from 70 percent certainty to 50 percent certainty wow that's really effective i'm really glad we did that okay it's the rat it, it must be the rat the presence of the rat was very inspiring a okay, self-tamed so, rat a self-tamed rat we're going to harvest that that's the name of my band <laughs> We're going to go ahead and do a little hunting, do a little harvesting. You'll see there are berry bushes around here. I'm going to harvest all the berry bushes and use them to cook meals. No, I, but I believe you that there are berry bushes. I have no so. reason to doubt you. <laughs> and you'll see we are expanding, expanding, expanding our little area. Uh-oh, Trista has gotten an infection in her torso. That's not good because we can't amputate a torso. Um, Pop Socket is going to go ahead and prioritize tending to Trisha. Trista, rather. Okay, and... Rub okay. the rat. Rub the rat on and her. Infection quality, 43%. That's pretty good. Wow, her certainty has been knocked all the way down to 34 from 50 in one day. That's very good. Now, the game is very easy on you early on. It's very easy to convert and recruit people early on. This will not be as easy. You will not be knocking people's faith in their own religions down by 40% in one day. <laughs> in uh later later in the game but the game actually wants you to you i know, do like that the, the, the campfire is at the center of all of your goods oh yeah yeah um i will change that to an actual cook's top pretty soon but for now oh and then there's gord did you ever okay pancake put on the uh put on the duster that i had gord make okay um but yeah trista is now healing hopefully of her infection Huh. Okay. Hopefully this goes well. Okay, the infection seems to be going pretty fast. You know what? Let's go ahead and build Trista a bed. Maybe a medical bed, because I don't know if she's going to make it if we just keep her on the ground like that. Uh, her infection seems to be going pretty hard. Um, ground is good for you. The ground is definitely not good for you. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and do a wooden bed for Trista. And I... I Let's go to prisoner and let's go ahead and instead of giving her only herbal medicine, we will give her our good medicine because I would like Trista to survive. So um we have been going for an hour two hours and fifteen minutes. Oh, okay. I'm um, sorry, everyone. I'm sorry. I I, sh I should stop now. I am very sorry. I don't care. I I I I'm just letting you know because um I it is very easy to fall into a rim world hole. Very good. Um, in a, in a I, I do not play RimWorld unless that is my plan for the rest of the day. Um, because 
that's as soon as I turn it on, that's that's what's happening today. Yeah. Let's um, see how fast those two hours. Oh, Gordon pops out at her fucking again. No. Uh, you'll, you'll see how fast that can go by. It's it's Rimworld can eat your entire day if you let it. And it's just an incredibly engaging little game full of these little pawns you actually start giving a shit about and actually start like making up little stories about in your head. And right now I'm ex- incredibly invested in Trista surviving. Fuck shit. This might be fun to live stream. Oh, fuck it. Prioritize tending to Trista, please. I really would like her to survive. Okay. We have given her the good medicine. Okay. Quality 75. That's good. Okay. Rub the she- essential oils on the back of her neck. She might make it. She might make it. She might make it. The infection is at 52. It's current. Her immunity is at 49. Um, oh boy, I don't like this. Uh, all we can do right now is <laughs> can someone please fucking build this bed for her. That's please? true, Matt. Well, I also didn't know, like, visually, I'd never watched anyone play the game before. It's like, visually, I didn't know what it was like. So, like, when you're talking about fedoras made out of human skin, I'm visualizing a fedora made out. I didn't realize it was, like, goofy. Little little lego people yeah i didn't know it was little lego people okay and we're gonna go ahead and very different when it's little lego people you probably should have led with the fact that they're little lego people okay we have now put trista in a medical bed um and we have treated her with the good medicine so what we're hoping right now is that she survives uh i'm doing kind of literally everything i can right now to ensure that when you want to look when people survive what you have to do is you have to open their health tab and you have to check out their infection. Um, It looks like I'm doing pretty good. Trista's immunity is now at 64 and the infection is at 62. Basically the immunity needs to get to 100% before the infection does. That's how RimWorld works. And it looks like we're not going to have an issue with that. So I'm, I'm happy to hear that. We're going to block them from using the good medicine again because Trista is now outpacing her infection and I'm going to send them to harvest wild healed root to use on her because i like to save the good medicine for when we need it and you'll see no pops more up. ivermectin and elderberry juice for you he's feeding her and he has convicted her it took just a day and a half to get her certainty in her own religion down to 2.4 percent so <laughs> she went from like 70 to 2.4 percent that's pretty great and now we have some medicine for her and there we go all right and we're cleaning up cleaning up cleaning up all right Things are do they automatically good. repair the spike traps, or do you have to tell them to do it? Oh, they automatically do that. All right. And her immunity is at 78. The infection's at 71. Things are looking pretty good for Trista. All right. Right now, though, I would like Gord to also have a cool duster. Uh-oh. Oh, I don't know if I want to do that. Hmm. I think I'm going to pass on hunting muffalo, which are like a quintessential rimworld creature but if they decide to kill you it's like it's over for you so i'm going to tell them just to hunt some gazelle and everything seems to be going pretty well here pop sockets asleep gourd is out digging at compacted steel pancake is out hunting gazelle how's it going pancake huh so you haven't hit it no you have hit it it's bleeding everywhere okay and it'll die in 14 hours good job good job pancake and Gord is over here mining. Oh shit! Medical right. emergency. Okay, medical emergency is Trisha. Let Trista. Let's see how Trista's doing. Infection extreme. Immunity eighty-eight out of seventy-eight. That's fine. Pop socket. Wake up. Ten Trista. And that ought to do the job. And Trista will overcome her infection now. Infection is at extreme levels, but her immunity is at ninety-two, while the infection is at eighty-three. So she'll survive. It's not a big deal. What are your notifications? It's freaking me out okay mad guinea pig we killed the guinea pig i think y'all missed that and visitors let's clean that up okay trista is now oh fucking they're fucking (sighs) trista is now uh i think she should have yes infection developed immunity so there we go trista is now fine and trista is not converted i don't think no that's how much they still believe in their original faith outlaw theory which means they are raider supremacists. So they think the people who deserve to rule the world are the people who are basically Vikings. Stop feeding people raw meats. Just cook. <laughs> God. You know you can edit it so they stop eating raw meat, right? Yeah, I know, I know. It's just, oh, it's so annoying. Stop, stop it. Just let him cook. Let him fucking cook. Just stop it. Okay. All right. There we go. Now, 
Undraft. Feed her real food, please. Thank you. Okay. So there we go. Uh, that's that. And here he is. He's probably going to convert Trista right in this moment. Yep. Conversion. Popsocket tried to convert Trista to his own ideology. Trista was convinced and changed her ideology. Popsocket has successfully turned Trista away from outlaw theory and towards free way. Now Trista believes the same things we do. Trista holds the same values we do. And that means I can now recruit her without her being an enormous pain in the ass all the time. So that's what we're going to do now. Pancake. You, you can do? also. Pancake, what the her. fuck are you doing in there? Hunting gazelle. No. What gazelle? Pancake. What gazelle is in there? No. Oh my God. Someone's trying to fucking suicide. Stop it. Bad Stop pancake. It. Stop it. Pancake. God. I swear to uh, God. You could walk. also. Uh, you could also enslave her. That is another part of the game. I could enslave her. Um, right now, I am not going to enslave Trista, Trista. And my reasons for that are slaves require a lot of maintenance in RimWorld. Yeah. Slaves are a thing where basically they can rebel. They can attack you. Um, you have to keep them suppressed. If you don't keep them suppressed, they will constantly be looking for ways to fuck with you. And it's just, it's, it's a big issue. Um, slaves in mm -hmm. RimWorld are frankly, in my opinion, most, most cases, more trouble than they're worth. So I don't yes, really same. With them. So um, there we go. Oh, he is now trying to convert Trista. Uh, not convert, uh, lower her resistance to recruiter. So her resistance had gone from 11 to 10.4. And you know what? Let's look at Trista's social bar. Now here's Trista. Trista does not like us very much. I should note that because she is literally our captive. However, you'll notice um, she, likes, she likes Pop Socket more than Pancake or Gord. And if you mouse over, you can see that because he's been talking to her. He's been chit-chatting with her. So he likes her. She likes him a little more. Whereas... Uh, I'm going to end my stream because oh. I'm done drawing. Okay, um, and my computer basically can't do anything else um, while I'm streaming. So um, right. thanks everyone who stopped by my stream. Um, we can still keep going playing RimWorld. I just yeah. want to do other things on my computer and have to end my stream to do that. Okay. Uh, so... Yeah, everyone bye. Goes. Thanks everyone for bye yeah, Kel's stream. Yeah, go, bye Kel stream. Go come to our YouTube and you can see that the Iron Circus Comics YouTube and you can watch me continue to play if you care to. Okay. But um, yeah, we have uh, just we have just um, tamed a llama. That that thing popped up. That notification popped up that we have tamed a llama. Uh, so what we're going to do right now is we are going to go. The thing about llamas is they're not like cats or rats. They will wander away because they are just. You so know, you have to put them in a fenced area. Exactly. So we have to go ahead and build a fence. I'm going to build a fence. This is probably not great, but it's only one llama. So I'm going to build a fence like this. And it, it like, it genuinely doesn't fucking matter. Um, <laughs> and fence gate, we'll make a wooden fence gate like that. And once we have this built, they will automatically like take the llama and, and herd it in here. So we just need uh, some. You have to put the little sign up. Um... Oh yeah. We have to put the little sign up. That's true. So we have to go to the mis miscellaneous tab. The pen marker tells everyone in the, in the um, colony, what animals are allowed to live in that pen? Oh shit! Another raid by the gunman. Oh, this is a guy with a knife. <laughs> okay, so this sucks because specifically they will they they will go after everything in your colony, including animals. And the llama that we have just civilized, we have just domesticated, it's right there. Fortunately, Pop Socket is right there too. So Popsocket is going to defend this fucking llama, dude. Popsocket is going to rock up and shoot this dude because I don't like the way he is looking at our llama. Okay, so he has shot the dude a little bit. I am going to have him back off a little bit and go over here and shoot the dude. Now, how bad has we hurt Banks here? Okay, so I can tell you right now, we will not be recruiting Banks because he's an addict to go juice, which is basically amphetamines. Um, and we don't have any. And so he's going to be incredibly obnoxious for at least a year. Did, and he's just, he's not did fucking you, worth did it. Did you drink Bang Energy drinks? I, I did not, no. Well, they're probably not going to be around anymore. They got sued for like all their money. Oh yeah, why is that? 
Because they were stealing other brands' uh, shelf space. Oh. Like, cool. legit just walking in, putting their, like, product in, like, Coke's spots. Okay, so, there we go. All right, so, here we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. You just totally missed every single shot there, dude. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I think I think our friend Pop Socket might be in trouble here. Uh, pancake, gourd, draft up, get out there. Even though this dude's been shot like five times, he's he's fucking running after Pop Socket because he's on fucking drugs, okay? Ah. All right, so just shoot him again. Okay, we missed him. Um, how is he doing? Okay, he's going to die in eight hours. Uh, I'm going to leave Pop Socket here. I'm not going to actually have i'll gordon be right back pancake. i have to go to the bathroom okay i'm not gonna have gordon pancake do anything um i'm just gonna go ahead and leave pop socket here and to guard the llama because this dude will absolutely kill our llama if he decides he wants to and gord is going to continue building the enclosure for our llama while pancake cuts down the trees okay um this dude is he is he still alive? Is he still wandering around? He is. He is. Okay, and Pop Socket is just kind of chilling out here. Now the thing is, people will de recruit themselves if you just leave them idle for too long. So it's important I check on him while he's doing stuff. Okay, he has shot this man. In case you're keeping track, he has now shot his finger off. He has shot him multiple times, and he is still going. Again, this is because he's on fucking like trucker meth or something he's on go juice so he has lost a bunch of blood he has been shot multiple times he's going to die from blood loss in two hours but he is now going okay now's the time to attack now is the time to to attack and uh, uh because you know he doesn't know that he's been shot multiple times because yeah. he's on so meth i return to you deep pissed okay he has finally fucking fallen down oh my god okay he is finally down and I'm going to go ahead and uh, allow everything he dropped. What he dropped was he dropped some pot. He dropped some go juice, which is, again, like the trucker meth. And I'm going to have Pop Socket just have a meal, leave him there. We do not want him. He's, we're going to leave him to bleed out here. We do want the llama. Yeah, we do want the llama. The llama is definitely something we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Okay. Um... Yeah, everything seems to be going pretty decently here. So Pop Socket and Gord, go to bed. Trista, no, no, Matt, you... they weren't giving away free product. They were like basically they were like sh elbowing in on other people's shelf space. Like they were still being sold. It wasn't free. It was just they were like because like different manufacturers and brands have deals with the stores they um sell in to basically reserve spots for their product. And usually they will come and deliver their own product. Um, that's not mm -hmm. universal, but like if, if a store sells Coke, usually Coke will develop, well, especially it's like a corner store or something. Coke will, people will bring the Coke to restock their shelves. The bank people were basically coming in and just like convincing everyone to buy more we're inventory. Moving, yeah, they were uh, moving like, all the cokes over to put their stuff there. Well, not just that. They weren't even moving it. If they saw the cokes were, like, mostly empty, they would just, like, fill them. Yeah. Okay, so I have finished the place where the alpaca is going to live, and I've sent Pop Socket to rope the alpaca. Also, they lied oh. about what's in Bang. Yeah, Pop Socket has now roped the alpaca and is dragging it to its enclosure, which is here. And the alpaca is going to live a happy little life there. <laughs> and um that way uh we can have a we can have the a alpaca sword. on the front lines of our defenses yeah the alpaca will be living here and be eating this grass and we will have a source of alpaca wool which is why we wanted this alpaca all right but yeah so, no, the bang energy people were saying they had creatine in it but like water potable is that the word I'm thinking about? Anyway, stable creatine's not stable in water. You just have to you usually have to get it in a powder. So the fact that like, oh wow, here's an energy drink that has just creatine in it. It's not in a powder form. It's like soluble in the water. No, it was not. There was none in there. 
Okay, Gord is attempting to recruit Trista again. But, but they do taste good, and they have lots of caffeine, and that's why I like them. And now that they're basically bankrupt, that means I'm going to be able to buy lots of them until they run out. Because they're going to be like a dollar each from here on, probably. Okay, so... I win. <laughs> things are going pretty decently here. Um, We have left the body of... who was, what, what was your name, even? We have left the body of Banks over here. Thanks, because CB killed him. We will not see him very much. Um, unless, you know what, I'm going to have Popsocket. Yeah, Popsocket is already coming over to grab uh, his pot and steal it, which is fine. Uh, that's the plan. And we're just going to leave his body to rot over here because we don't have to look at it if it's that far from base. We're fine. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. So Spike, oh Spike, ooh. so Amanda, what do you think of uh, <laughs> what do you think of RimWorld? I think it might be fun, but I can see myself like getting overwhelmed and leaving. Yeah, you don't have to do all the things I'm I'm showing you right now. This is just a really good sort of basic. This is what vanilla RimWorld is kind yeah. of start. Like right the, here. the game I play the most is where I pretend I'm a dinosaur and I sit on a rock and I scream. Yeah, like so we're two hours in. We have a pet rat. We have a pet cat. We have a little ranch. We have some self-defense. We've made ourselves a couple cowboy hats and a duster. You know, we have a little sustainable area of all our own. And we're only just now getting started on the research, which basically means we are getting ready to learn how to make things like windmills and solar panels and armor and all kinds of fun stuff. This is just sort of like the very <laughs> Matt most says, okay, that was weird, Charlie. <laughs> Sorry, babe. But yeah, so this is Grimworld. But for folks who are unfamiliar with I it, I am the un I am it, the unpainted variant <laughs> of the Spike Blind Bag. You're the rare colorway. Oh, there. Are yeah, where they just like color. don't paint it. They say, "Oh, it's cast in like a pearlescent plastic, going? so it's special." But it's no, oh. you lazy bastard. You didn't paint it. Okay. It doesn't make it special. Anyway, what that's my it? beef with blind bags. Okay, everybody's very slow. Um, things are going pretty good. The the alpaca is growing wool. As you can see, its wool growth is at age, uh, is at 8.4%. Unfortunately, this will be our only alpaca because it seems like in between all our time trying to, trying to uh, domesticate them or tame them, the male alpaca that was with it must have gotten killed and eaten by something. So that sucks. That's, that's less than Are ideal. you stuck with what you start with? Uh, no, you are. Oh. But uh, we can find more alpacas. We can buy them. We can tame them. We can find them. They can wander in from the edge of the map. There's a lot of ways to get animals. And here comes Pop Socket with the pot. <sighs> yes. And so Weed. this is. Yeah, this is RimWorld, everyone. This is my favorite game. It's very much <laughs> like chess in the sense that it's just got a few basic ground rules. And well, that, you get that, them, that's not what you have. Yeah. There. If you See, if you had told me it's Lego, people would have sold me faster. Telling me it's chess makes me never want to play it. Well, it, it is Lego, people. And calling it a story generator is really fair because yeah. you start just making up little stories in your head about how these people are. Like when you were talking about how Pancake is probably super fucking annoyed. She has to listen to Pop Socket and Gord fuck all day. Or that they worship rats. Or, you know. That yeah, yeah I can see myself can playing it. And I think yeah. I'd have a better time with this than with, like, Don't Starve. Because Don't Starve stressed me out. Yeah. And you know, here we have like you know their little their little alpaca. They have a bunch of pets. Oh, Pancake is getting fucked up right now. He's smoking smoke leaf. Rather, oh. she's smoking smoke leaf. She's only nineteen. I, I I don't know if I approve of that, but there she goes. It's and fine. you'll see now that you know she's high on smoke leaf, so she's happy. She deserves she a little joy in her life. Let her have this. Yeah. So things are going pretty well. Gord is researching. Pop if she Sock wanted cocaine, I'd give her cocaine. You know, we're very much in the very early stages here. Everything is hit, lit by firelight. There's no electricity. You know, there's no real climate control. It's a really cool, fun, deep dive game. Or you can play it as simple and vanilla as you like. Or you can play it as complex and ridiculous. This game is indescribably different from the game that is, I refer to it mentally as like my comfort game. With the game I just turn on when I want to play a couple hours of RimWorld, which is a bunch of Egyptians in space on a spaceship who they come to your planet and they hover over your planet 
and they start broadcasting plays and stand-up routines to you and it makes you love them and when they're not doing that they beam down on the planet and kill all the criminals and turn all the criminals into genetic slurry and then turn the genetic slurry into mutant animals that they consider their pets and they favor little tiny living teddy bears that are sapient and sentient and that's what these people are they're these ancient egyptians with living teddy bears who murder criminals and like to put on plays and everyone loves them Uh, and that is the game of rimworld i am loading up my game which has a bazillion mods in it um uh if amanda wants once it's done loading if amanda wants to see a little bit of super modded rimworld perhaps but we are at the three hour mark and uh yeah, I think we can stop it here. I got shit to do. Same here. Um, I got things. What and we did an hour of setup before, so it's like I've been sitting on my ass for four hours. Oh, and hey, we got cargo pods. What a way to close things out. So we got secret gifts from space. Oh, and look at that. It's pemmican, which is basically beef jerky. So everyone can go get their beef jerky. Beef jerky from the stars. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone, for sitting through this and indulging me. Thank you for letting me... My ass hurts. Thank you so much for letting me share one of my favorite games ever with you, Amanda. Yeah, Um, it was neat. I might might goof with this one day. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Iron underscore Spike. I run Iron Circus Comics. You can find that on Twitter at Iron Circus Comics with comic spelled C-O-M-I-X. We're having a huge sale right now for all of our spooky titles for October. You can get stuff for 25 I'm going to put our off. traditional screen. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate your attention and your patronage. Please make sure to like and follow Iron Circus Comics here on YouTube. And if you like this, please let us know on Twitter and we can maybe play other games at some point. Yeah. Your turn, Kel. Oh, uh, you can find me at um, on Twitter at Kelhound, which is spelt like Hellhound, but with a K. Um, I also uh, make comics that you can read at kelmcdonald.com. Um, and I also um, do stuff on my Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash Um So, yeah, follow me in all those places. Uh, I'm Amanda Lafrenay, Twitter name Amanda Gaff a day, G A F F E a day. Uh, I have a pinned tweet, Spike. I have a pinned tweet that links to all my stuff, which includes my coffee, my Patreon, my website, my uh, Twitch, my other things. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs>